There it is. It says live. Yep. Uh, okay. Now, how do I log in here? Uh, it's going to log me in automatically because you didn't set it so I could be invisible. Did oh, no, I haven't done that yet. I need to do that. Okay. Don't worry. I'm in here. Uh, six minutes until showtime. Let me see if i got six minutes. Let me see if I can do it in six minutes. <laughs> uh, Firing up aim. Okay, you're under Charles Tendall, right? I hacker Charles. I hacker under I. Five minutes until showtime. I hacker. Oh, there you are. Okay. I'm eating an extremely, a uh, mildly healthier dinner tonight. Yeah, hold on. Let's see. And this. Evidently, it's another place. I cannot see where that is. Four minutes until showtime. Three minutes until showtime. Okay, I changed it. So now, when you if you log out and log back in, uh, you should uh, you should be able to uh, you'll come and uh, go log out and log back in, Charles. See if that worked. Okay. Um, <sighs> Let's see what this says here first. <laughs> Do that. Okay. Now log in. You should come in cloaked. Let's say. Chat room. Sign in. There you are. You're cloaked. See. Yay! <laughs> okay. I'm gonna decloak. Two minutes until showtime. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Why Frank? Why did you specifically say hi to Frank? Because I like Frank. Oh. <laughs> I also said hi to. Jo I specifically said hi to Jonathan too. I know why you say hi to Jonathan. Jonathan is a very active member. Frank, not so much. Well, he's, 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 he he answers once in a while. Yeah. I mean, he's active. <laughs> What? What? What happened? My wife is sending me news stories, and one that just came through is going to be interesting. Okay. 
why don't you log into AIM too? Or I'm on AIM. Yeah, but but you've got it. So like when I say hi, it says you're not on or something. Okay, let me. See. No. Okay, now it is. All right. Is is there any way you can get that so it, it does? Because it, normally when before you do it, it says this buddy is turned off text One messaging through. One minute phone. until showtime. It, it thinks it's a phone thing or something. Um, I'm not really sure what you're talking about, but <laughs> not a big deal. Not a big deal. <laughs> Don't sweat it. Uh, so you're right. visible. Okay. Okay. No, <laughs> what? Look at the chat room. <laughs> yeah, it's a ghost hello. <laughs> ghost hello. That's what it is. See that your name is not there. <laughs> when you're cloaked and you type, it, it'll, it'll ask you one time. <laughs> John, your show will go live in five go. seconds. Four, three, two, one. Broadcasting live, it's America's longest-running national radio talk show on computers, Computer America, hosted by national columnist Craig Crossman. Look for Craig's weekly column in your favorite newspaper. This show is being beamed nationwide at ComputerAmerica.com. Keep it here for technology news, computer products, guest interviews, and your phone calls. You're listening to Computer America. Hello, and welcome into the Computer America show. It's the nation's longest-running, nationally syndicated radio talk show on computers. Computer America is heard around the world and coast to coast. And I'm your host, Craig hey, Crossman. I am not Charles. You are? <laughs> I am. I don't know yet. I'm still trying to figure that one out. But I know I'm supposed to be here for some reason. Well, yes. Well, you're my co-host. Let me explain to you how that works. So, so you know who I am. I know who you are. Okay. We all know who you are. Oh, who oh, might I be? You typed it, I am not Charles. <laughs> 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 okay, so it's, my co-host is evidently having an identity crisis. So. <laughs> I, I, pro, I, am the, I am the certified ethical hacker formerly known as Charles, who will henceforth, henceforth be known as a symbol. Ah, okay. So like Prince. Uh, it's, yeah, just you and Prince, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we no longer have names. We are yeah. symbols. Yeah. Um, by the way, I had an interesting afternoon tonight. I've been, you know, Quickset is going to be coming on the show uh, okay. next Monday. Uh, they make uh, these uh, Z-Wave compatible locks and that work with automated systems and Bluetooth. And, um, uh, they sent me one here, and I installed it today. And uh, it took me all of about what, 15, 20 minutes? How long did it take me to put the lock in? About 20 minutes? Three or four hours. Three or four hours. Three or four hours. <laughs> no. And the truth no. shall set you free. No. The, <laughs> ah, the, the truth wife. shall set you exactly. free. No, put it, put it in about 20 minutes, half hour tops. Um, and um, uh, it, it's great. I mean, it works really nice. Uh, it's got, uh, as I said, we're gonna, it'll, um, we'll go into more details, but I, I put them, they're sending me a couple more uh, different types of locks, so I'm going to see if I can just do it with a screwdriver. And uh, But it's cool because they have this technology that allows you to rekey a key. In other words, uh, so if you lose a key and you want, instead of making a new one, you just, you know, you can use another key and you don't have to have the locksmith come out and rekey it, which is very cool technology. So, but, Or uh, you could just have me come and rekey it for you. Yeah, and and it's bump, it's bump proof. You can't do that. They've um, um they've done a lot, a lot of nice stuff Wait, with that. Bump for. proof meaning I can't use bump keys. Can't use bump keys on it. Nope, mm -mm, won't work. Hmm. So, uh, <laughs> so are you saying that they can't? It can't be picked either. Well, um, we'll find out more about that when we get them on the show. But just kind of give you a little heads up that uh, Quick Set's going to be here. And you didn't uh, have them send me one. The guy who is notorious for breaking into places. You well, didn't have them send me one. <laughs> uh, it's just a, it's just a very, very cool lock, and uh, um, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see if we can do what we can do on that. In the meantime, uh, welcome into a Thursday edition of the Computer America Show. Uh, our Google Hangouts is up and running. All you have to do, go, do is go to our website at computeramerica.com. 
uh, just right there on our home page and under the, uh, the well, you can do it under the, the pull down menu. It's under the home listen interact, uh, uh, home listen and interact pull down menu. It says chat room and live video. We have combined our chat room page with our live video page. Um, you can also either, there's a button on there too. It says chat room slash live video. Just go there and uh, you'll see everything that's going on. You'll see, you, you can not only listen to the show, you can actually watch the show. Uh, you get to see Charles and myself and sometimes we have our guests or certainly our correspondents uh, appear on the on the uh, Google Hangouts with us. And um, uh, we're still in beta, but what we're trying to do is uh, we're trying to get things all worked up so we can have our guests appear on a regular basis on the Google Hangouts. Because if the, go go if the guest is Skype ready, you know, they can do Skype, then they can do Google Hangouts. So, uh, mm -hmm. So we're doing that. Because all uh, the cool kids are doing it. Yeah, exactly. You can also uh, call us if you want. If you have a question, uh, what we're talking about, um, just go dial 347-884-8881. That's 347-884-8881. We'll get you on and get you through. Uh, we have email uh, if you're radio shy and you still want to talk to us. It's live, L-I-V-E, at computeramerica.com. Uh, again, you can join us on our uh, in our chat room, our add-on chat chat room. Just follow the instructions there when you're on the chat room page. It's real simple. It works with your Mac, Linux, Windows. You know, you're in there. It's just uh, a lot of fun to be in there, interact with us. You can also Skype us too. Our Skype address is Computer America, and that's all one word. However, um, uh, the best thing is just pick up the phone, give us a call three four seven eight eight four eight 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 one. So. It's Thursday. Uh, we got a great show in hour two. We're going to have computer and technology news brought to you by Slimware Utilities. They are the official optimization software of Computer America. Uh, anything else? I mean, I, my day was basically putting, playing around with the, uh, the 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 locks. That was kind of cool. What, what did you but do? I, but I thought it only took you twenty or thirty minutes. Yeah, but uh, that's that was my day. But you said you spent <laughs> your entire day doing it. Yeah, hmm. well, no, <laughs> playing with it after it was installed. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I believe your wife. <laughs> it was really actually, actually it was very simple to install. It was very easy. Uh, I just needed a screwdriver. So then why did it take you three no, to said, five hours? No, I didn't. I just what? said it. I just said I was playing around with it. I after I got it installed, I showed everybody how it worked, and you know it's got the little buttons on it. It's very very cool. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to talk too sure. much about it because uh, they're going to be on the show Monday, and we're going to talk about all the details uh, with it. Uh, okay. Well, so. Did you do anything interesting today? Uh, well, I went to let's see, I went to a, a a job fair and did some not some recruiting of my own, but met some some companies that may become you know clients at some point. So I'm I'm happy about that. Okay, um, yeah, that that was pretty much it. Okay. All right. Well, uh, it, what we'll do is we'll uh, I think we'll just introduce our guests. I got lots to talk about with them, uh, and then our guest this hour is from a company called Audiobooks. That's right. Now, audiobooks.com actually provides the first on-demand streaming and downloadable service, uh, service for audiobooks, delivering access on any internet-enabled smartphone or PC, including Apple iPhones and iPads and Android smartphones or tablet devices. The company is the first and only provider of something they call cloud bookmarking. It's proprietary technology that synchronizes users' last listened to bookmark position across all devices without requiring a special browser plugin or dedicated application. Now, here to give us more insights into how all this works is Ian Small. Ian is the general manager of audiobooks. Ian, welcome into Computer America. How are you? I'm great, gentlemen. Thank you for having me on. Uh, our pleasure. Uh, that was a that's a, that's a fantastic introduction. Um, I think uh, you might be hired for our marketing department. Much appreciated. Thank you. <laughs> Yay! Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, so tell us a little bit about uh, um, audiobooks in general. I mean, you know, uh, what's the concept behind it? Uh, we're we're not talking about e-books here. We're talking about books that you actually listen to, correct? Yes, correct. So it's a it's a pretty common. Um, uh, mistake for people to uh, anytime I'm discussing the company I work mm -hmm. for and 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 the product that um, that I'm usually speaking of that to get confused with with ebooks, audiobooks, the digital audio versions. Uh, I, I essentially say what, what used to be books on tape are, are are now you know digital audiobooks. Books on your phone is mm -hmm. is, is pretty much the way to put it. 
Books on your books phone. on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> books on your phone. I like that. Yeah. I'm actually a huge fan of books on my phone. That's kind of uh, whenever I go on really long rides, it's an, usually an audio book in my ear that that oh, I'm listening is. to. Okay. All right. You know? so I know. Can... I know. Most people are like pe- most people are like you know. Uh, why you want to listen to music or something like that? And, you know, like the last one I did. Well, last the last one I the, the most memorable one I did was Atlas Shrug. I listened to that one all the way through riding to uh, 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 um, California. Mm-hmm. Um, and here recently, I listened to a book called um, uh, uh, Day by Day Armageddon. Wow. Okay. Wow. Good stuff. Yeah. Now, do you listen to the books when you're riding your motorbike too? I mean, yeah. I mean- yeah, so, so that's what I mean. Is I don't I don't actually own a bicycle. I'm all motorcycle. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so you, so you listen to the books while you're while you're uh, operating your your bike, which is I think yeah. it's kind of interesting. Now, um, now are the books that were t- uh, Ian uh, are audio books? Are they read by uh, who, who reads them? Are they by celebrity voices or are they just by people who do it? And do they and and are do they Kind of have interesting tonal inflections, or is it sort of like just they just read it straight through? I mean, how, how, what does an audiobook sound like? So the the, the books that we primarily deal with, um, we work with all the major publishers. Um, majority of the major publishers all have audio divisions mm-hmm. with um, within their organization. So what what you'll find is essentially about ten percent of the print books actually get converted into audiobooks, mm-hmm. and they all actually have professional voice actors come in and do um, do, na- do narration for the content. You will find some authors that will that will read their own work. Um, mm. A lot of times, biographies or um, self help or you know b- business books. You can you can find uh, you can find the authors that will that will voice over their their, their own work. But when you when you're speaking of fiction, which is the most popular audio, uh, genre within w- within audiobooks, we you you find authors tend to gravitate towards one or two narrators for say you know their series that, that that they're working with and they stick with that they 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 get a voice that they like and and they go with that now do the but the these uh, people who read the books do they add tonal inflection or are they just reading it straight through or do they embellish it, you know, uh, with their voices? So, you know, when someone's speaking, they'll say, "And this is so and so said." I want to do that. You know, or um, do they add that type of thing, or is it just straight reading through? Or do they come? Do they voice act it out? I guess is what I'm asking. Well, it's 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 really title specific, it, and, and it depends on the content. So you you can get um you know you, you can get a certain title that has a narrator that is just going to be very monotone, and not animated at all, mm-hmm. and just go through and and read the content, and mm-hmm. then you'll get um you'll get and then you'll get another book in which um someone goes through and 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 you know the, the narrator is delivering it in in such a in such a way that it's 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 cinematic almost uh-huh. um so it and so it really becomes and it's something something that's specific to audiobooks because you can you can like a book if you read the book and you enjoy it. You can listen to the audiobook version and really dislike it. But then there's also the flip side to that because you can there can actually you can actually find a book that's that that you're not enjoying reading, but the voice delivery of it can be so excellent it can actually draw you in and you can start to enjoy something that you weren't enjoying reading yourself. Um, so it goes both ways. Typically, I find and obviously I'm a strong advocate. I mm-hmm. find it usually goes the manner in which the delivery draws me in. Um, you know, mm-hmm. when you speak of the the, the Game of Thrones mm-hmm. books, the, the the HBO show itself is you know is fantastic. The books themselves are are, are tough reads. There's a lot of characters to to follow throughout the book, um, but you know, listening to the narration, the story is 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 done so well that it's it, that um, I like to listen to the book. I like to watch the show. And I actually don't like to read the book. Well, well, so. let me ask. Well, in other words, when you're let's say you're taking Game of Thrones and you're listening to it, and they're and their their voice acting it. There's a lot of embellishment. I mean, when when the does the narrator when when a woman is speaking, do we hear a woman saying it, or or uh, or? And then when the ma- the male part, you hear the male, or do you have different voice actors uh, sort of acting out or playing out the book uh, per characters, or is it just the same narrator through the entire story? 
Well, so, so typically, like, I, think, I think what you're thinking of would be what we classify as what would be a full dramatization. Okay. So that's when they'll actually get a cast in, um, where there, there'll be multiple voice, voice actors um, mm-hmm. uh, on taking different roles. Uh, and that's kind of a specific genre with, with, within audiobooks that you can get that. Um, can, be, can be considered radio theater at, at, at some times, but uh, full dramatization is, is, is what you can find. And when we carry all those books on, on, on the site. Okay, so, so you offer... The, this, so the category is something called full dramatization. So you're getting all the inflection, you're getting the, the male, the female voices, and, and when it's two different characters, it's actually two different people reading it, so you don't confuse who's talking at the time, that type of thing. Um, right, it's, 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 it's like a full audio play. Right, a full audio play. And you find, you find that usually mostly with fiction, I would assume. I mean, you're not going to get that uh, in, in, uh, in other types of... I would assume that you find that usually is the style of fiction. Um, right, very much so. Yeah, very right. much so. So, what other kind of books does audio uh, books offer that may not be fiction? That would be more of the straight drone through kind of reading. I mean, is are they technical books or are you? Uh, what are we looking at here? And what what kind of titles do you offer? Uh, well, well, so for us, and then the audiobooks in general, like I, as I mentioned, fiction is is mm. is uh, fiction, romance actually is is one of the strongest you know genres for uh-huh. for audiobooks. We're, the audiobook industry is very similar to um, to the to the print industry, which is you know it skews mm-hmm. slightly female. So we do we do like to cater to uh, to, to that demographic. Uh, on the technical side of things, um, we we don't offer. Too much to say. I think that would go down that path as far as instructional, instructional, you know, technical books. Got it. Only because it sometimes it translates. It's, it's tough to translate. Got it. Um, All right. You know, to the end user in that capacity. Right. Um, what you know on the, on the technical side of things, what is exciting about audiobooks is probably the the delivery and where we've come in the past. Five six years, um, you know, and and, and what's going to happen in the next five six years for us? Because you know, our industry itself, which is which is ra- rather niche, it's it's a 1.2 billion dollar industry. It's which so it's you know in terms of relativity to other large uh, outlets, and it, it's 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 rather small. Mm-hmm. So, um, but what we, what we've seen for growth is you know stuff like when the iPad launched, uh, was when the when the iPod launched, and, and and again we saw it with the iPhone, and and people being being able to a- access digital media um, on on portable devices opened up a whole new world for us in in this industry. Mm. Um, the, the stigma associated to audiobooks was always kind of put towards visually disabled. And right. it's it's it, and what what people have found now that it's you know, as Charles mentioned, um, it's 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 commute, it's travel, it's it's entertainment, um, you know, spoken word podcasts, um, shows like yourself uh, have really helped kind of bridge the gap into people being more comfortable and and with with finding this uh, as a valuable means of entertainment. So um, the fact that someone can someone can pick up their iPhone or their Android device and you know log into their audiobook account and have forty five thousand titles in their pocket and listen to them you know with a click of a button rather than you know buy what used to be a forty five dollar CD audiobook um, it's really helped us so you know when, when we're speaking of technology back to back to your back to your question that's what's exciting about us is, is is digital media where it's going and and how it's helped us as an industry um, I don't know did you ever have you by any chance seen the movie hereafter with Matt Damon it was directed by uh, Clint Eastwood uh, um, I, yeah, have, Damon. I've got yeah. a, I have a three-year-old and a one-year-old, so we don't make it to the movies too uh, oh. too often. Right uh, but now. He, he, uh, Matt Damon plays a psychic who basically is unhappy with his life, and, uh, um, and but one one of the things that comes to mind is the the, the character who he plays actually li- sits down and listens to an audio books, and and uh, he uh, evidently there is this one uh, he it's this gentleman who reads Charles Dickens. And he listens to Dickens, and evidently he's enamored with the author of the of the who reads these uh, audio books out to him. He listens to him, I think, on cassette at that time, and uh, and he goes, he actually goes to London to to meet the fellow because he was so impressed with him. So, uh, so I would think with classics like that, uh, Dickens would have you. I assume that you you have a uh, you might have someone of some uh, reputation or 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 who is very very good at it and and people just listen to it and 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 you get people i mean do they do they 
are they sort of like the stars or superstar in the audiobook area? These these narrators who do it so well. Um, yeah, I, actually, there's there, there's a couple, and you can um, you can get quite attached. Um, so, for instance, the, the the Harry Potter books. I believe the gentleman's name is uh, Jim Dale, who who reads the Harry Potter book, uh-huh. um, and does the, the you know does does a fantastic job. And so it's it's just kind of it's kind of funny because you can get actually just so attached to those um, uh-huh. those voices that you when you're switching. Between books, it actually takes a little bit while to kind of get used to having the mm-hmm. new, new, new voice actor reading to you. Um, mm-hmm. So there are, so there, there are a few like that, right. um, and then there are a few that that have really. Uh, so when we're speaking of, you know, who's done an excellent job for narration that's really gravi- gravitated. Anyone that hasn't listened to an audiobook before and then they talk to me about it. The, what I typically recommend to them is to try Michael J. Fox's books. He's yeah. got two autobiographies that he's done himself that he reads, um, that he reads himself, mm-hmm. and his delivery and and his stories are just fantastic. So as far as narration is concerned, and any anyone that gets really kind of like a lot of acclaim for the narration, I'm going back a few years now just because he's just coming to the top of my mind. Mm-hmm. Um, is he's a great listen to um, right. or, or the Michael J. Fox books. Right, and also when you think of narration. Well, the first thing that comes to my mind is uh, is um, uh, um, Morgan Freeman, who does these narrations for the movies and everything. Uh, he's, right. He's, has more has Morgan Freeman ever done an audio book? Or, uh, or I can't think of one off the top of my head. I don't. I don't think so. I mean, because when when you're when you're speaking of someone of that that caliber, um, the the cost to have uh, to uh, have him do something is rather uh, is rather expensive. Um, production costs for audio books have have really kind of got have really gone down over I guess over the past seven years. Sure. I, I'd say so. Um, I, again, you know, with it being a smaller market, you, you'll get the odd book in which you'll get a major celebrity reading. Mm-hmm. But um, well, have you ever thought? They're, 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 have you ever? Sorry, go ahead. Have you ever thought of hiring someone because there are people who are mimics that can do you know multiple celebrity voices and just have him you know mimic like Morgan Freeman and <laughs> read a book? <laughs> you know, wouldn't, wouldn't that work? You know, uh, or, or the, well, as as far as production, we actually don't produce that many audiobooks. We we tend to work with the publishers themselves, ah. and, and because they you know they have it down to a science, they got it. Um, uh, it's it's just it's 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 their forte working with the authors. It. It's we, we we do do it. We we do it on a very limited basis, and we do we typically do books that um, uh, that the publishers don't have any intention of producing into audio. Mm-hmm. Um, so we we'll, we'll, we grab the odd one that we think should be an audiobook that our customers will like, and it's, it's more of a labor of love for yeah. us. No, I, so let's talk about audiobooks.com. Then, so the so the, the the what actual role do you play uh, for audiobooks? So, so what we're doing and where our focus is is the convenience to to get the the, the books to the end user. So mm-hmm. basically, the publishers we work with a little over two hundred publishers that that produce the audiobooks. Um, as I mentioned, we've got forty five thousand titles. Uh, customers can come to our site. They, you know, they're able to find the books that they want, and then we offer a subscription service. So basically, for 14.95 uh, per month, we give you a credit which is redeemable for an audiobook of your choice. So every month you get a credit, and every month you're coming to get you're getting a book, and it's for for $15. And basically, what that does is. You know, offering the a membership plan allows the customer to get the books for essentially what is 50% of what they would be paying on an a la carte basis. So they they sign up, they they, they join our they join our plan, they you know start to start to communicate with us via the blog, and we try to have a bit of a, a community feel throughout throughout our website. And um, they uh, what we typically find is actually we do offer an HTML5 streaming web browser application, but we also have native apps on on Android and iPhone. And, and what we do find is everyone loves, of course, which which you probably know yourself, everyone loves the apps. And so they're downloading and streaming the the books on their on their phone, so they can listen to it in the car and on their way to work, and, and or you know falling asleep at night. Would would you say then audiobooks is sort of like the 21st century version of oh I'm trying to think of a what was it that big record that company that would you know you could buy records uh, you know vinyl records through them and 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 they had some special deal going on uh, and you would if you if you uh, you uh, oh what was that uh, record company that company that you get uh, uh. anyway it sounds to me like you're sort of like a clearinghouse uh, for 
for all of these audiobooks. One, uh, one Are you talking about Publishers shop. Clearinghouse? Publishers Clearinghouse. Uh, no, it's not Publishers Clearinghouse. No, it wasn't. No. What was it? Columbia, a record company, yeah, that, ah. yeah, Columbia Record House, uh, that you subscribe and and you you know when you signed up you got like seven books, uh, seven records for you know a dollar or something like that, and then after that then you would and then you would subscribe it for a year and so they would sort of catch up. I don't know if you remember, you may be too young to remember that, but well, no, no, I I, I do remember that, I do remember that. We, we're we're a little bit different, and we okay. offer a thirty day free trial with with, okay. with with no commitment, you can cancel any time, and then after that it's just it's just a a, a recurring fifteen dollars a month. And and you get a book, and you get a credit that you can come and 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 get a book that you would like to listen to for. Um, Excellent. Yeah. No. Sorry. Uh, I, I, I just, sorry. Go ahead. Look, no. No. You you were saying. Go ahead. Well, so I just I I just don't I don't remember Columbia's. I just don't remember how how it worked with with them for an ongoing basis. What it, it, basically the reward for the consumer is um, is, is the discount on, for for the membership. Sure. Uh, so as I mentioned, it's you know the fifteen dollars. Most of the time, if you if you're on iTunes, then you're typically going to find twenty five to thirty dollars is the price point for most sure. audiobooks. Right. Um, and just as long as you know, as you're a member and you're part of the community, then um, you know, the, then you get the discount, and it, it you know, it right. works out for everybody. Yeah, and, and it's not, because it is different than iTunes. It sounds like you're sort of have your your own niche that you you found and discovered, and and uh, that's why I sort of I, I brought up the Columbia Records things, but I understand it's it's different. But uh, but, mm -hmm. but it sounds to me like you you because you're actually streaming. You know, I mean, you don't buy a physical object it's like just like iTunes. You're getting the you're getting the digitized uh, audio file for you to listen to, and which you download over the internet. And, and now, once you have that, do you 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 get to keep that, or or you listen to it for a certain amount of time, and then it goes de it deactivates? So, it, what's the process, uh, uh, Ian? So the so so yeah. Once once you have the book, it's your book um, okay. for for as for, for for as long as you're alive. Okay. Um, and we do offer a streaming and download platform. So uh, basically, what we're trying to do is offer the convenience of the instant access with with streaming. That you know, as soon as you press play, that you're enjoying the the audiobook right at at, at, at the press of the button. Right. And so we actually originally launched with that um, last year. What we found from our customers, um, and we and we we kind of played around a little bit with how much cash in advance would we would we offer for if if there was a Wi-Fi signal that was uh, you know, unavailable mm -hmm. or if the, the, the cell the cell dropped out um, and and you know people actually do like to travel with the content and so what we do what we found is that there was there was some uh, some need for for download as well and that the customers just wanted to uh, wanted to download the, download the product as well so we offer both streaming and download it's, it's a seamless process and that way if you you have bandwidth restrictions on your cell phone plan that you can, you know, you can do it. Uh, do it. Do it under Wi-Fi, and mm -hmm. then just take your book with you, and then you're playing it on your T phone, just as if it was in your, is in your library. Typically, how long, how large is an audio file for a typical book? I'm not saying, I'm not talking about War and Peace. You know, I'm talking about the average book. About how big is the uh, file that you have to, if you choose to download it? Uh, about 150 megs. Okay, well that's not bad. That's certainly uh, it. it it's not bad, and we and we do play around the compression on the files. So um, most of our files are offered at a 64 kilobyte per second. Um, uh, M4B is yeah. is what we've found to work best. We do also offer an MP3 OGG. We offer multiple formats depending on the use case. If if you're using uh, our HTML5 browser, typically we find um, the different browsers don't play very nice with with different file formats. Yeah. So um, so we we offer a variety of Formats as well as a different as well as a variety of bit rates. Where they where um, if a customer is having issues with their plan, then we can switch them to have it be a lower bit rate, and then and then that way um, they're not consuming so much bandwidth. So we try to be a little bit flexible there. They just need to you know talk to our customer service, and you know we try to work with everybody. Yeah, OGG. It means you're supporting people with Linux too, I'd imagine. But uh, 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 the the thing is. Um, well, the thing is that uh, you don't require a lot of bandwidth because this is mostly the spoken word. This is not music per se. So I would think that a low bit rate uh, really wouldn't affect the quality of the audio, would it? Uh, when it you're does. You're, you're you're exactly right. It doesn't at all, and that's why we found that we can offer the 64 kilobyte because the spoken word. There, there. You know, typically what you're finding for most audio con for most audiobook content is there isn't very much music at all. There might be a slight mm -hmm. intro or a, and outro. Mm -hmm. Other than that, it's just spoken word. So, 
um, we we actually did some some group testing for with with, uh, with small customer base, and um, you know found out we offered a, you know 128 up to 320, and and found out it's just unnecessary. 32 we find is a little bit low if the customer asks um, ask our customer service, we can work with them and, and provide that to that specific account. But we we, we do try to recommend 64 um, right. only because when you start playing it in the car. Then you can, you know, some, some some cars nowadays have some pretty nice sound systems. Yes. So oh. you do want to get that that hiss, that tinny, that tinny S. You we, we we want to avoid that. Right. No. Um. The uh, uh. So the uh. Oh. I, the um. The the format. Uh, Use your words, Craig. Use your words. No, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> the, so the form you basically you don't think that uh, the the high bit rate is is, is not, but what about the full production the uh, you mentioned the, the full theater production uh, is there music uh, in more music in those productions and therefore the the higher bit rate would be necessary what do you what do you find the there? drama yeah. well so, so for the dramatizations um, what we found there is actually we'll actually work with the producer on that so whoever actually has produced that audio content um, we typically ask for recommendations and so because we, obviously we can't go through every every piece of content ourselves before before mm -hmm. it's it's put up so mm -hmm. we'll talk to them the number one we need to know how much is in there what's in there um, as far as you know music is concerned and then recommend they, and they they will recommend um, what the bit rate is I, I'd probably say less than three percent of our inventory is done at 128 Got it. Uh, right. you know, kilohertz per second only because it's just not necessary all right uh, Ian the uh, music means we're at the bottom of the hour break and we're going to continue on uh, we're talking to Ian Small he is the general manager of audio books you're listening to the Computer America show on the Boost Radio Network on the Blog Talk Radio Network and the IRN Radio Network we'll be right back with lots more Hey everyone, have you heard about the no-no hair removal device that's sweeping the globe? If you want to go weeks without shaving and get smooth, professional, quality results, here's our favorite host, Cheryl, for no-no hair removal. Thanks. Hey gals, I love talking about my no-no. It's this cute little hair removal system that you can take with you and use almost anywhere at home or on the road. No more expensive in-office treatments, painful waxing, and no more wasting your valuable time. Got unwanted facial hair? No-no has patented Thermacon technology that works on all hair and skin colors so it's perfect for using on all body parts and now you can take advantage of this incredible risk-free trial get the no-no the facial kit a travel case and a $100 discount shopping card and you don't risk a penny to try it try the incredible no-no hair completely risk-free call 1-800-953-5415 that's 800-953-5415 800-953-5415 Looking for a best friend? Brother Wolf Animal Rescue has your best friend waiting just for you. Their mission is to protect and enhance the lives of companion animals and the people who love them. Their no-kill rescue shelter is open year-round, making it easy for people to adopt their best new friend. This year, Brother Wolf will find homes for over 2,400 orphan dogs, puppies, cats, and kittens. All have ended up as an orphan through no fault of their own. Brother Wolf has created a safe, nurturing environment where these special animals can heal emotionally and physically until they find a lifelong home. Their life-saving transport program brings dogs and puppies from overcrowded shelters in the south to rescues in the north where homes are easier to find. Brother Wolf Animal Rescue is a 501c3 organization. To learn more about their life-saving work and to make a donation, visit their website at www.bwar.org. That's www.bwar.org. Help to realize Brother Wolf's vision when no animal is euthanized for lack of a home. Who's a good boy? Hello, this is your London Minute voice memo. There are two approaches to the Microsoft Office suite these days. Owning the software or having a subscription. The rental approach is the future and that's called Office 365. And if you're a student, you're in luck. I arranged my son's Office 365 university package last week. It cost £59 or $79 for a four-year subscription. And a little known fact, you get four years free support with that subscription. You won't get that with any own it outright version. I did find it a pain to verify my son's student status, however. I spoke with a lady from Kansas and then a man in India and then another man in India. 
and he asked me where I lived. I said the UK and he said, well what state is that in? It was a long tedious call, late into the night. When the job was done, I think I heard myself say, yippee, but no one was up to hear me. In the morning, my son acknowledged the hassle I had put myself through. I saved a bundle. You won't learn this in university, son, but a penny saved is a penny earned. For dorm room pizza and such like. See you over on Twitter. I'm at Computer Tweety. This is Patricia Reichel for Computer America. Thanks for that, Patricia. We always love the New London voice memo here on the Computer America show. Uh, Craig and I are talking to Ian from Audiobooks. Craig, I have a, I have a, high, I have a college question for you. Yes? Did you have the cinder block, cinder block furniture when you were in college? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had beanbag furniture. How about that? beanbag furniture? <laughs> I was wondering because you know it's kind of a staple. I mean, I had it in the barracks. What about you, Ian? Did you did you have beanbag? Did you have a beanbag or a or 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 or, or cinder block furniture when you were in college? Uh, I had lawn chairs. <laughs> <laughs> they had they had Office 365 back then. I bet you ten bucks we'd all been we'd still been just as broke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, welcome back to the Computer America Show. We are 34 minutes in after the hour in the first hour. Uh, we're talking with audiobooks. We're having a good old time over here. If you guys want to get involved in this, you can join us over at ComputerAmerica.com in our live interactive add-on chat chat room. You can send us an email to live at Computer America. Uh, you can give us a call, uh, 347-888. We 884-8881. The number again is 347-884-8881. I'll get you on and get you through. And uh, um, actually, Ian, this is the customary point at which in the show um, we all get we all join hands and <laughs> and we 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 talk and we we do fun things like harass Craig for not using his webcam. <laughs> <laughs> he thought he was going to get away with it for a second there. He was like, "What is Charles doing? He's not he's not going to harass me about it tonight." Yes, every show. No! <laughs> that buttons come back to bite me. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Well, you know, um, so uh, during the break, I was talking to my wife. Uh, what I mentioned the uh, the Columbia House, uh, the record club that they had, and uh, I realized, that, you know, it was it was like you know, you got ten records for a, d a penny, something like that, and then. And then you had, right, yeah. and then you had to buy a record, you know, once a month or something like that. You had, you know, you had to pick from whatever that they that was hot at the time that they were pushing. But regardless, it was still a heck of a deal. You got some great records for a fraction of the cost that you if you went to buy. But you you had to commit to buying X amount of records over a, a period of a year, and it was a huge success. Columbia Records was huge. I don't know where they are today, but but uh, so it, it made me think they a little. Went back to Columbia. Yeah, <laughs> of what? Uh, I'm taking notes here for for a business model possibly. For yeah, a I mean, here. It, it would. I mean, you, you offer like you know five audiobooks for a, you know a, a few, you know a few pennies, whatever it is, and with and then you you have an agreement that you have to buy so many audiobooks in the upcoming year, and and still it's a it's a great deal if you want to go and, if you wanted to buy the books, you know, and now you, as you say you own them. So uh, and that was that was a huge success. So yeah, maybe maybe it's a it's a business model that that's uh, that's uh, worth uh, looking into. Possibly repeating. You could be on to something. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> Craig only requires twenty percent, even that's though right. it was his idea. So. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so um, so basically. Um, I know you you get you you're doing that. How long has the uh, have you been doing audiobooks.com? How long have you been in business right now? So, we've actually so we, the actual birth of the company was back in 2003 as Simply Audiobooks. Mm -hmm. um, which Simply Audiobooks is, is still an existing brand. It's um it's similar to the original Netflix model, which is the uh, the um, direct mail renting. So you can so just like that as Netflix used to be, you can rent an audiobook by mail. Um, we ship it out to you, and you um, 
uh, listens to the book, drop it back off in the mail, it comes back to us. Mm -hmm. um, about a little over two years ago, um, we were really assessing the market. Um, obviously, the technology shift has, you know, has, has taken place. Audiobooks do fall slightly behind uh, in terms of, of, you know, shifting and, and, and adapting to, uh, to, new, to new technology. So, you know, when we're looking around the space um, and, you know, the CD slowly, slowly kind of finding its, 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 its way to the demise, um, we kind of decided what we wanted to do. And when we looked at, at the digital market, um, we thought audiobooks.com would be um, the best way to go. So um, I guess it was late 2010, we, kind of, we, we made the splash, jumped in, um, and have kind of been covering our ways to this digital market and, um, and, and, and you know, making, a, making a stamp, putting our stamp on things. Yeah. Jonathan, in the chat room, uh, you'll appreciate this, uh, um, uh, Charles. He says, you sell an audio book for $1,500, make it exclusive and invite only. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I, bet you, I bet you have a bunch of people send an uh, invite. It I better be an that, awesome audio book. Yeah, I don't think that, that model would work. For for audiobooks, maybe for Google Glass, but but for uh, audiobooks, I like my you know a penny for you know a certain amount of like five or six audiobooks, and then you know you're committed to buy. So I think that really that that might actually work much better than that, than that one, Jonathan. Uh, so you mentioned Google Glass. Is Google Glass coming out anytime soon? If you, uh, if you look, Charles is wearing it right now. It's actually rumored to be coming out right now. Yeah, if you were in this year. In market, like it's it's available. You you can purchase it somewhere. No, 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 no. no. It, it it is still it is still in uh, the final final stages of its closed beta invite only beta however however they gave uh, they gave all of us the ability to invite someone else again uh, which means that there's about to be something major happening um, or they're just trying to get that last you know the last influx of cash but um, it, it's rumored to be coming out by the end of the year to consumers I mean they've gone as far as to to develop you know prescription frames now and and there's a lot of accessories that are out there so it's coming and it's like it's building 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 uh, if you want to get an invite I can actually send you one. Oh, that'd be that'd be great sure right. be fantastic thanks all right there definitely you go. Yes, exactly. This is working out great for yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, it's like, look, I get all the free swag. This is great. This is it. <laughs> so um, now, I understand audiobooks. Uh, are you going to audiobooks.com? Are you going to be participating in something called World Book Night? And uh, tell us about what that what World Book Night actually is. Yes. Oh, so so what we're doing actually, World Book Night is um, uh, it, it's a like it's I guess outreach is uh, for, for for reading and to promote you know literature and reading altogether. Um, and it's been going on for quite some time. Um, so and what it is, it takes place in the United States on April 23rd, and um, there's going to be I think a little over 25,000 volunteers that will be handing out. Uh, books to individuals and um, just essentially promoting reading and it's something um, that audiobooks dot com and the in collaboration with the audio audio publishers association who we're a proud sponsor of um, has been trying to find a way to take part in so and basically it's really tough to give a digital book to uh, to somebody on the street mm -hmm. so what we're doing to thank the volunteers um, for for their hard work for giving out the books is we're working with a little about, about as I mentioned twenty five thousand volunteers we're giving them uh, free digital audiobooks so that they can listen to the books while they're kind of walking around giving out books to people on the street. So it's just kind of a little bit of a, you know, a kumbaya moment for, for everyone who <laughs> loves books and so the people kind of giving out books can listen to books and so it's something that we're really proud of working with the Audio Publishers Association um, to kind of thank thank those volunteers and, 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 and kind of like attach the audiobooks with you know, with, with with print editions, and and say, you know, um, we're all in this together as far as as far as just books in general and promoting them. So, if you were to kind of put on your forward glasses and and uh, kind of look at the audiobook industry uh, for the upcoming year, for the rest of 2014, uh, where do you see everything going here? So. So I want to do one better and go beyond 2014. So really? if, if we just go to 2014, 2015, because you know, as I mentioned, you know, the iPod, the iPhone, 
technology itself and, and what it has done for you know to help our industry. So when I look at what's coming up next, what excites me most is in car. Um, our product is consumed mostly in vehicles. 25% of our business is done in the state of California because of the traffic. Um, outside of that, we look at New York. So. It, the technology in cars and what's being announced lately and the conversations in which we've had with the, with the auto, automobile manufacturers really excites me and where they're getting uh, as far as technology is concerned. I know GM announced a partnership with AT&T that the 2015 vehicles will be internet ready. Um, that's fantastic for for our product and, and, and for, 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 for consumers and audiobook listeners as well to be able to get get the consumer, get the listener, where they actually use our product. It's always been something that's, you know, that I've been with the company for, for a little over eight years. Mm -hmm. That's been probably our biggest hurdle is that it's so tough to reach the user um, where they actually use our service. We can, you know, we, we, we are an e-com business and, and we can talk about, you know, online and everything, but where they're using it is, is, is in cars. So when I'm thinking about 2014, 2015, 2016, the next big, I think you know technology kind of leap for for us is going to end up being what what happens in cars, and I think that's got huge potential, huge opportunity for you know not just our business but just audiobooks in general. So that's kind of what gets me gets me excited. I, I you know in the future. Sure. No, I I certainly understand that. Um, and uh, so you you really feel like you're sort of on the cusp of this. I mean, you're you're on the. Uh, uh, I guess the breakthrough uh, w with this technology. I mean, the technology is there, and and you're you're sort of like uh, uh, helping it along. I guess just making it more accessible. We, we're really trying to push. I mean, so everyone knows, you know, the the, the phones. I mean, that that, that that works great. That works good. Um, the, you know, the phones are fantastic. Um, auxiliary cables. Uh, plugging it in, Bluetooth into the device in, into the car. That's great. Um, the discovery. Possibility of you know of being in car is, is I think the next the next next thing. I mean when you when you look at Apple announcing you know CarPlay, um, there's so many middleware companies that are that are coming into the automobile infrastructures um, that are that 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 we'll be able to work with because of our technology because we're able to stream and, and you know not all the storage is is required for us that um, we'll be able to offer the product. In the area, and the and the customers will be able to act, access it where our products most utilized. We that, this way we don't have to worry about someone driving and unsafely picking up their phone and what am I going to be you know can look for something to listen to? It's it's right there in the dash, you know, which can follow all the drivers' roadside regulations. So um, I, I, we're we're definitely trying to work with work with everyone we can to push this as you know as as as, as far as it can go. Let, let me ask you something, and, and Charles, I'd like to get your feedback on it because I actually have never really listened to an audiobook. I just, I'm sorry to say, uh, uh, I really should. Um, is it fair to say that so if, uh, if you have someone who's read a book and someone who's listened to an audiobook, you have two people, one's read it, one's listened to it, uh, it's fair to say that both of those people, you can consider them as that, uh, that they both read the book? I mean, uh, uh, although. Ah, yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so, I'll, so I'll chime in first, Charles, and then, and then, and then feel free to jump in. So yeah. this is actually a heated debate that we have with our, uh, with our members and with, you know, and with actually with, with non-members as well. Is if you've listened to the book, can you classify that, that you've actually read this book? Yeah. So all of our listeners, so all of our, all, all of our members and users, myself included, will say absolutely, unequivocally, yes, yes, you've read the book. Mm -hmm. Now there are. Um, Book lovers, purists, I yeah. guess that's, you know, for, for for lack of a better term, um, that that love books, but will just like have an absolute dislike for audiobooks and just you know and just argue the counterpoint tooth and nail. Where it's no, you haven't sat down and read the book, you haven't turned the page, you know, which I guess now would be clicking on your on, on, on your on your e-reader, right. um, but but you haven't gone through and, and read the book and, and put your own your own um, you know your own imagination to it or your own your own and so uh, anyway so it's actually a, a really really I wouldn't say heated debate yeah. but especially within the office though too we start this debate within our blogs and what used to be our forums every three months so it's, it's fantastic to watch yeah. so um, I'm in the camp that yes absolutely that you, um, you that you have read that book. 
but uh, it's interesting because I, I I never thought that it would that it would was taken to that point, but evidently it must be because obviously it hit a hit a nerve and uh, uh, and you have yeah people. absolutely no it is it's it's it, if you check out um, if you just kind of go through some old posts on our blog and I think we've done it in quite some time so I'll actually talk and make sure that we start this again internally just in case anyone wants to follow because um, you get. There's some strong voices on this, so it's, it's just a funny well, question that you asked. Well, I mean, I mean, it's like the it's like this. So, so Craig, do, you, do you, I assume you do a lot of reading? No, I don't do a lot. Of, not as much reading as I used to do. I don't. I do very little reading these days because I have so many other things that I have to do. You know, so right. But but when you read, when you read, yes, like and you, especially when you're reading to yourself, do you yeah. either a read it aloud or b read it? You know. Hear it in your head. No, I hear it in my head. I don't. I don't read out loud at all. When so I read, what is the difference between having an audio book read it to you and you hearing it in your head, yeah. versus the voice that you create, you know, making you know in your head? I mean, that's in my yeah. opinion, it is one hundred percent. You read the book. I mean, it, it it's read word for word. It's not made into a movie. The book isn't made shorter. You know, that's sometimes true. it is. You know. But you know you didn't miss anything, and you can hang and and honestly, in my opinion, sometimes the narrators make the story even better because the inflection, the character changes, right. the, all that other stuff, it's all there and it's great. So, no, I, and I would tend to uh, Charles, agree. you're hired. Yeah, I would. Thank tend, you. <laughs> no, I would tend to agree with you, Charles. I, I, I mean, having a book read to you as opposed to you reading it, uh, there's really no difference that I can perceive, other than the fact that you're hearing it in your own head. You're adding the, the tonal inflection or whatever it is in your mind. You're you're experiencing that way as opposed to someone reading it to you and you listening to them. Uh, I, I don't know. The, well, I mean, th I mean, think about it like this. I mean, again, it, it's it's the story. Now, if if we had the story, it was like there was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Yeah. <laughs> that sucks, right? <laughs> but if you get it was the best of times. It was the worst of times, and it, the story comes alive based on the person who's reading it. You know, yeah. I mean, I've had, I've, had, I, I've, I've, I've done, I've, I'm a huge audiobook fan because honestly, you know, I can't sit still long enough to actually read the full book. Like, I'll hold it, I'll start it. I even, I mean, like, I even have them on my tablets to try and read them, to try and go through them and do it, it do it that you. way. Yeah. Huh? Not and like it, it, it doesn't work. But I can put an audio book on, and I could have my headphones on plugged into my iDevice mm -hmm. all day. Really? Like, like, so there's like, some, so there's you know. some, see, that's something psychological going on. There's, is it more effort to do the actual physical reading as opposed to the actual physical listening? Uh, well, think it, about it this way. Think about yeah. it this way. I can, I can listen to what you're saying, and I can do 15 other things on my computer. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. If I'm reading the book, you are dedicated to that book. You, yes, you are. You, 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 you have, have to put it down. You have to look up. You have to do anything man, else. You know, it demands a hundred percent of your attention. There's no question about that. Uh -huh. Where you're listening to, but but then the, argue, the, the flip side of it, well, you might miss something because you're distracted. You might miss something that the uh, the person reading it said because you were distracted. Right. See, these are all points about the heated debate in which I mentioned, yeah. um, and because you can get into the you know the actual true definition of 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 read. Can you know, and then can you say? Well, I read this book, and then it's well, you know, if you define read, you actually did not read that book. You listened mm -hmm. to the book, so yeah. don't say that you read that book. And then it goes on and on and on and on. And but what's the difference? Circular, I mean, right? It's, argument. And it's not like a movie because you watch a movie of a book. You, we all know that movies never have 100 percent of the book, and they say, "Oh, the book was so much." Okay. Movie. You okay. hear that all the time. So let's that's give, a, let, yeah. let me give let me give you a current real world scenario of this, right? Yeah. Audio book wise, right? I read. The entire Ender's Game series, yes. Ender's Game, Ender's Shadow, uh, uh, the Hive Queen and the Hegemon, Xenocode, all of them on audiobook, and the characters came to life because of the narration in it. Mm -hmm. And when I sit down and I have a conversation with anyone who's physically read the book, there are parts that I picked up on because I listened to it because I had the audiobook that they missed out on because they were they were they had to pick it up or put it down or they couldn't they you know they couldn't sit through the whole thing or they couldn't they couldn't concentrate or something like that something happened where they missed crucial portions of it and then you go to the movie theater like rarely do people like like when i was sitting in the movie theater there were people like wow you know and there were people who were just watching the movie just to be watching the movie and there were people who remembered reading ender's game way back and there were things that were coming up in the movie that they didn't that did, didn't make any sense to them 
Yeah, well, None you know, that's, that's very, very true. I mean, I mean, whether it's Lord of the Rings, you'll hear that. If it's you know, whatever, whatever uh, classic is is made into a movie, you know, they're going to leave leave parts out because it's virtually impossible to do a, an actual physical book uh, when you're actually you know, in a movie. It's oh, it's and you'll always hear that oh, the book, the movie was great, but you know, the the book, there were so many different things and sub. I mean, I, going on. I did, the, I did the same act. thing. I did the same thing for the girl with the dra dragon tattoo. Yeah. And we went and watched the movie. The movie was disappointing because I read the book, but yeah. I listened to the book, huh? And 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 you hear that all the time. But you listened to the book. You didn't read it yet. You exactly. still, yeah, exactly. <laughs> see, Ian, you see what I did read it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you did read it. You heard it. Uh, okay, okay. I assi I assi no, I assimilated the same information in the exact same way that you would have assimilated. It's just somebody else's voice. Have now, you, again, there, wait, Ian, has there any any kind of studies on this? People who have read books and and people this, another group who's read read the book and kind of, uh, uh, I mean, it was or any uh, have any psychological studies been on the, done on this or that that you may know of, or is it just uh, are we just kind of what what's going on? Okay. There will be well, now. Most of, most of the studies that are conducted are are in the combo of um, how much how much data you can consume if you read and listen to the content at the same time. Mm. So um, uh, basically retention, because uh, there there actually is studies that, that that prove if you actually listen to and read the book at the you know simultaneously. Well, not the, no, um, no 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 I'm not no don't don't read it and listen to yeah, yeah no that's right. that's nuts no no if you want to you know either listen to it or you're gonna read it you're not gonna do both right yeah. Um, I know my son Ben and Aaron. My son Aaron also were, were, were vor voracious readers. I mean, they 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 would they would read these books that were like like three inches thick, you know, massive books, and they would go through go through them like uh, in days. They would read book after book after book. See, that's the that's the, that's the other the other plus side to an audio book. You know, for one, it resumes right where you left off, so you don't have to think about that. But have you ever seen the book, the physical book? of Atlas Shrugged. Yeah, it's huge. Yes, yeah, yeah. it is monstrous. And anybody you put that in front of, anybody you put that in front of, <laughs> they're are... always going to be like, yeah, not happening. Because yeah. there's there's a there's an intimidation factor that comes oh, with that's... I've got to make it all the way through that. But with an audio book, you know, you get that book, that same thing in the palm of your hand, you know, you're not working your that's... eyes, it's not straining anything, you're that's just that's listening. Intimidating. It's huh? not it's not as intimidating. I agree with all these points, and, and that's why I think that uh, audiobooks. Are, and I assume that when, if you, if you are, are in an English class at a university, would have you, and you have to read such and such a title, and you have an audiobook version of it, and you're a student, you know, w would you read it or would you listen to the book? I have, I have a feeling that probably the students would elect to go for the audiobook as opposed to having to sit down and pay and read it. But then, would you get that? But see, then now there, Ian, there's a perfect place for you to ask this question. Yeah. Go and ha go and have you know get 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 a get a, a college or a high school professor right mm -hmm. and say this is the this is the book that we're going to be reading and I want a book report on all of it. Mm -hmm. Have ten people do a book report. Have have half the people do do you know read the book and do a book report and then have the other half of the people listen to the book and do the book report and have the the instructor give grades. And what do you think would happen? I, you, honestly, I think the ones who listen yeah. to it are going to get better grades. Ian, you should sponsor something like that. <laughs> Just you know. that, this is I'm listening. Again, again, I'm taking notes. These are all fantastic <laughs> ideas. This is great. I, I tell you, I'm making it like a bandage during during, during this, this this call here. This is fantastic. Yeah, exactly. So this, this this is good stuff. This is all good stuff. Uh, I, I think it's a great idea, and and and, and make it an event. Uh, I think you would, uh, and that would certainly draw a lot of attention. I, and I would I would be I would die. I would love to hear what that professor w or the professors would say at the end. You know, what, no, what, see, that's the thing. Those are the people who the so the 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 you you have to do it to where the students don't know that the other people are are, are getting book, yeah, you know, and point. then the teacher can't know who's yes. doing what. Right. You know? Well, it would be it would be revealed in the end after the grades and everything, and then you would reveal which ones were listened to and which ones were read, and then yeah. so it would be a blind test. It would be completely. Uh, 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 blind to both sides, and then that would be it. Yeah, exactly. I 100% would. That'd be extremely interesting. Yeah, that'd be extremely interesting. Yeah. I expect to see this on either the History or the Science Channel before the end of the year. Fort in the chat room wants to know if the books <laughs> wants to know if the books have pictures. <laughs> <laughs> yes, in your mind. Illustrated. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think. Like, so I mean, there's just there's just certain things. I mean, like like for example, Atlas Shrugged. Like. 
the the way Ayn Rand actually explains, you know, the the John Galt line in my head, listening to it, mm-hmm. it built the world, and I could see it. I could, well, you know, like mm-hmm. I could see it in my head. You know, when I've got a physical book, it's like I try and get those things, but there's always something that breaks that image. Yeah. Always something. You know, I have to put it down. You know, it, you know, we we run into we run into like grammatical errors or something in the book, and you're like, well, what did you just try and say? Yeah. You know, and it pauses you, and your brain stops for a second. You know, it doesn't flow. Yeah, yeah. it's a pop up <laughs> audio book. What's a pop up audio book? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the ones that you get online, where you get you know ads for Viagra and whatnot. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Well, listen, Ian, uh, we're we're just about at the end uh, of the interview, and it went by so quickly, but it was a, a lot of fun and uh, certainly a lot of intriguing things have cropped up. And you should keep in touch with us and let us know if you're going to do some of these things. Uh, certainly, would love to hear about it. Absolutely, will do. Absolutely, I've, I've had a great time. It's been a lot of fun. Absolutely. And again, if you want to see more about this, go to computeramerica.com. Uh, click on our show notes page. You'll see today's show, March the 13th, uh, Thursday, and uh, you'll see audiobooks is there. We even have a link to the audiobooks website right there for you. So if you're uh, if you don't have a chance to to or to write it down, it's all at computeramerica.com. The links are there, and you can ch- and that is up for all time. Of course, our our videos will be up also on our archives of uh, show video page. We're going to re- be revamping that because. Uh, we're we're gonna have a different links where it turns out it's not practical to put them all on one page. So we're gonna actually Charles and I are gonna work to make a YouTube uh, YouTube video page of all the audio uh, and video uh, videos that we're doing uh, uh, here on Computer America. Ian, thank you so much. We really appreciate you being here tonight. Again, uh, audiobooks.com. Check it out for yourself. Uh, and that was it. The first how was it? The first one is uh, the uh, thir- first one is free. How do you do it again on on your website? Yeah, first book is free. Three, 30 days. Give it, give us a try. Your first book is free, and you try it out for thirty days. Excellent. Wow. There you go. Ian's, thank you, guys. Much appreciated. Yeah, Ian's yeah. General, general manager of audiobooks. Ian, thank you so much for being with us here tonight, and we look forward to having you back again. Okay. That's great. Cheers. Thanks, guys. All right. Take care. Bye bye. Uh, all right. I'll participate in that study. Yeah. All right. Coming up in hour two, we've got computer and technology news brought to you by. Slimware Utilities. Slimware! The official optimization software of Computer America. Got some great stories coming up. Uh, We're going to take a quick break, just momentarily, and then uh, we will continue on uh, with the Computer America show. Uh, This is the Computer America show on the Blog Talk Radio Network, on the Boost Radio Network, and the IRN Radio Network. We're coming right back. Don't go anywhere. Broadcasting live, it's the only national radio talk show on computers to air every weeknight, Computer America, hosted by national columnist Craig Crossman. The first hour's behind us, but there's still more of tech news, tech talk, and your phone calls. We're being beamed nationwide at ComputerAmerica.com. You got computer problems? Bring them on. You're listening to Computer America. Computers run the world, and we run computers. Call us or send us an email to live at computeramerica.com. Hello and welcome into Hour 2 of the nation's longest-running, nationally syndicated radio talk show on computers. This is the Computer America Show, and I'm your host, Craig Crossman. And I am your co-host, certified ethical hacker, Charles Tendell. And uh, we just finished uh, talking to Ian Small, general manager of audiobooks. Uh, My wife, uh, just uh, during the break here, told me that... uh, uh, one of her uh, em- employers, which turned out to be a very good friend of hers, uh, was going blind at, in the, at the, toward the end of his life, and she actually introduced him to audiobooks, and uh, and, and uh, he he loved it, loved it, you know. So um, uh, so whether you're visually impaired or not, this is something that you need to check out at uh, audiobooks.com. Um, <clears throat> Are you really not a fan of audiobooks? I just no. I it's just I'm not a fan of it. It's just that I don't. Uh, I just really don't have that much time to to read or listen to. I mean, I've got so many other things going on in my life right now. I wish I had some time to do that, but I don't. Um, you so know, you could just use your time, whole iPhone 5s. Yeah, I know. I I have my iPhone 5s when I just before I go to bed. I have my iPhone gold iPhone 5s and and, and I'm watching, uh, but I usually wind up playing solitaire, or something silly, you know, just to kind of get me to go to sleep. Uh, because if I get involved in the book, then I'll read that for two or listen to that for two or three hours, and I don't have much sleep because I don't get to bed about three or in the four in the morning, you know. Uh-huh. So, so so I don't really have that. Uh, 
maybe when I take a holiday, I'll I'll, I'll get an audio book and just listen to it. And, uh, because obviously you you do it, you know, and uh, you enjoy it. But you, again, you do it when you have nothing else to do when you're on your bike and you're traveling from one. So that makes a lot of sense. Not you know? necessarily. I mean, sometimes I do it, you know, during during the day. It just depends on what I've got going on, you know. I mean, if I if I need something to help to to, to if I feel like my brain isn't moving as fast as I want it to. Or it's moving too fast, then I'll put on an audiobook. Yeah, no, it, it makes perfect sense. I certainly understand how how that works, and uh, maybe on the long drive back to uh, North Carolina or something, I'll, I'll get an audiobook and listen to it in the car. You know. Yeah. And uh, usually, what happens when we're traveling? Uh, my wife goes to sleep. She has complete trust and faith in me as a driver. And uh, well, then you can't go to sleep. And then exactly, I'm looking for her. She's not. I just, I just heard the laugh in the other room. <laughs> Thank you for that affirmation, honey. And uh, <laughs> so, you know what I did notice is that uh, when if we rent a car, you know they they have the uh, satellite radio, and so I, I'll turn on the comedy networks, you know, and I'll listen to the comedians. That's all, and that makes the time zip by real quickly too. So, I, because of that, I, I I'm sure an audiobook would would do the same thing. So uh, what I'll do, yeah. I'll, I'll get an audio book. I'll probably download it to my I, gold iPhone 5s, and uh, I'll I'll listen to it. You know, on the you road. know the audio quality is even better on the the gold iPhone 5s, right? Yes, it is, and especially yeah. with the earbuds. I'll put the earbuds in. Yeah, but it'll have to be when I'm on the road because obviously I don't want it to interfere with you know uh, driving. Somebody honks a horn at me. I, yeah, I certainly... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, okay. Well, uh, that said. Um, I guess it's time for us to do uh, some computer news, right? I think so. Let's do it. All right. Tonight's computer and technology news is brought to you by Slimware Utilities, the official optimization software of Computer America. You can visit them at slimwareutilities.com to clean, speed up, and optimize your Windows system for free. Free. That's right. Everything at the SlimwareUtilities.com website, absolutely free. Uh, download them all, like their RecImage uh, backup software for Windows 8, uh, all their optimization uh, utilities. We use them here at the Crossman household. They are wonderful. They really do the job. Uh, they speed things up. And again, it's completely free. Download them all. Use them all. You'll be very happy that you did, and you'll thank us for it. Okay, uh, let's go to the first story of the day, and this is um, uh, Google launches an app store for Docs and Sheets. <laughs> sheets. Sheets. Are those what you count when you're trying to go to sleep? No, those are sheep. Oh, okay. Google is rolling out an online marketplace for third-party apps on Google Drive, and they just announced this today. The apps, which Google is calling add-ons, are available to Google Drive users in Docs and Sheets, the free online word processing and spreadsheet services. The add-ons are created by third-party developers and allow users to do things like sign documents. Really? Yes. Hmm. Sign documents, create customized email templates, or make name tags from within documents and spreadsheets. That's cool. With the easy bib Bibliography add-on, for example, users can create bibliographies by searching the web for sources, choosing a style, and inserting a formatted bibliography without ever leaving the document. That's cool. Um, users need to select the new add-ons tab from within a doc or document or spreadsheet, then hit Get Add-ons. From there, users can choose from the few dozen apps currently available in both app stores. Once an add-on is installed, it can be used from within any document in Google Drive. Add-ins are only available within the latest versions of Sheets, which Google launched in December. You'll need to upgrade before using them. Uh, the feature is currently in developer preview phase, which means though anyone can create an add-on, developers must be approved by Google in order to publish them to the marketplace. Once the preview phase is over, any developer will be able to publish an app to the add-on stores for docs and spreadsheets. So there you go. Hmm. Interesting concept. Indeed. Yeah. Hmm. 
Okay. Well, I, I, I'm going to need you to do another story. My wife is asking me for, for a tech support thing. And I'm, I'm like, what, really? Now? A, a of tech, all times? A tech support thing? Yes, she's having problems. Okay. Well, just hit the no button. Uh, well, she doesn't get no button. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she 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 doesn't get that. That was part of the stipulation. She can't. She can never get the no button. <laughs> you are a smart man. Yeah. <laughs> I know your wife uses your no button on you all the time, though. All the time, exactly. <laughs> well, uh, now you know who LeBron James is, right? Of course. Tweets a Samsung phone fail and then deletes it, according to the story from Fox News. King James may rule the basketball world, but he's just as susceptible to Android bugs as the rest of us. Samsung had to wince when its highly paid spokesperson tweeted out the following yesterday to its 12 million followers. My phone just erased everything it had in it and rebooted. One of the sick what? One of the sickest feelings I've ever had in my life. Wow. LeBron James deleted the tweet not long after, but not before it was retweeted hundreds of times. James has been promoting the Galaxy Note 3 tablet Ooh. in several high-profile commercials for Samsung, which last year spent a reported $14 billion in marketing. Wow. Not a, not a good move. Um, of course, you know when you have that kind of money, who cares, I guess. Um, this is just the latest endorsement-related gaffe for Samsung. Despite the uh, the the uh, uh, scene around the world post by Ellen DeGeneres during the Oscars with her Galaxy Note 3, she was tweeting backstage using her iPhone. <laughs> well, yeah, there you go. The good news is that LeBron got his data back, according to la a later tweet. Somehow we don't think Samsung is laughing. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not sure whether James's Galaxy came to its senses on its own or whether a team of Samsung specialists swooped in like a geek squad SWAT team. But there are some... Go, 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 go. But there are some go. tools you can use to get back up your, da your own data. For example, Helium Premium is a $4.99, that's $4.99 app that lets you schedule backups into the cloud, whether it's Google Drive, Dropbox, or Box. Another popular option is G Cloud Backup, which is free to download and includes one gig of cloud storage space. You can back up more than one device to a single account, but you also you can also pay for more space, up to 32 bucks a year. The app even lets you earn up to eight gigabytes just by tweeting about the service. Maybe they should sign up King James. <laughs> so there you go. Mm. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. You you you're not a big fan of Samsung anyway. Nor nor the the basketball players. I'm not a sports fan. I didn't know who he was until I read that. You didn't know who the Wow. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry to say. I'm not a big sports fan, folks. I've always, I've never, never, never have been. Uh, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll do this one from GigaOM.com. AT&T. GigaOM, GigaOM, GigaOM. Mm -hmm. AT&T closes its acquisition of uh, why 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 are you randomly refreshing the page? Excuse what me. was that? What was what? I didn't do anything. My, I hate Mac. I, you're, it, talking, it, you're, it, you're talking to your Mac, not to me. Okay. Yes, I, I hate Mac. I, I I I just I I'm looking at the story. I scroll down, and then all of a sudden, it was just like bloop, gone back. What really just happened? That's here? not your Mac. That's Firefox refreshing. Evidently, uh, that's the the cache. Uh, well, I'm in Chrome. Cache. No, then make the Chrome. Then the make, you need to make the cache bigger in Chrome. Then, huh? That's I think that's a cache issue. I'm gonna figure out how to use this camera on on my Linux box because I don't have this problem there. Uh -huh. Okay. Anyway, anyway, AT and T closes its acquisition of Leap Wireless after getting FCC approval. Huh. Uh, Leap Wireless is no more, oh. though its cricket brand will live on. AT and T on Tuesday gained the Federal Communications Commission's official stamp of approval for its 1.2 billion dollar takeover of Leap one of the last remaining large regional operators in the country. Since the U.S. Department of Just Justice never weighed in with any antitrust objections, AT&T finalized the deal late this afternoon. We are taking over the world. We are bored. 
Yeah, the more crappy network. Anyway, <laughs> Leap ran Cricket Communications, a prepaid operator with 4.6 million customers. And all of you, all of those 4.6 million customers who were once just on Cricket Networks, congratulations, you're now going to get billed three times as much. <laughs> anyway, operating in small and mid-sized markets all over the country, as well as in several big cities like Chicago, Houston, Las Vegas, and Las Vegas. AT&T isn't so much interested in Leap's customers, no, really, as mm. it's Leap's spectrum, which occupies the same band in which Ma Bell is deploying the, the newest LTE systems. Leap's CDMA network it probably isn't, isn't long, wait, isn't long for this world. In other words, in other words, L, uh, Leap was using CDMA technology, which is really old, old, old. AT and T wants to use, you know, the its newest LTE system. Like, evidently, they bought. Well, the Leap. problem is, the problem is, is AT and T's network sucks. Well, and but CDMA technology, even though it may be old, even though it may be, it may be archaic and it, and whatnot, it works everywhere. Why do you think every single free burner, throwaway phone, Walmart phones, all piggyback? On the carriers that have the most signal, your roaming signal is a falls back onto somebody else's more prominent network. And with AT and T coming in and saying, "Oh, look, we're going to do this," you're going to lose coverage. No, but you know? they're but AT and T plans to maintain the Cricket brand for its prepaid services. That's right there in the story. So. Right, but that's the problem. So let's continue on. AT and T right. plans to maintain the Cricket brand for its prepaid services. In fact, in coming week, it in weeks it plans to relaunch. Cricket over its GSM, HSPA Plus, and LTE networks, running it in parallel with its CDM opera CDMA operations. Again, all of you wonderful Cricket users out there, be prepared to go up in price. Yeah. The FCC did have some concerns about what the demise of the country's largest independent prepaid operator would mean for, for competition in the budget end of the mobile market. As one of the conditions of the deal, AT&T pledged to maintain a $40 unlimited talk, ta talk and text plan with 500 megabytes of data for the next 18 months. Mm -hmm. Which means... Again, all of you cricket users out there, all of you small now. Now here's what here's what here's what screws this up even further. Okay, cricket wasn't the only one. Cricket and and Leap they held down the 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 cheaper you know lower cost you know cell phone providers. You didn't get the same coverage. You didn't get to travel as much. You had to have these special roaming things to be able to go to different places. You know, but the thing about it was was in those areas people weren't traveling much anyway, and these people were enjoying unlimited talk, text, and data. Right? They were enjoying that for anywhere from forty to forty-five dollars a month. You know, they were loving it. And when Cricket got the iPhone, people flocked to them. And now that AT&T has scooped them up, be prepared to kiss it all goodbye. And people are now going to be forced to spend ridiculous amounts of money on the exact same plan. Unless, unless they lock it in right now. Those who are on contract, I guarantee you they won't be able, they, they won't be able to force them out of that contract. They won't be able to say, look, we're going to auto-upgrade you for this rate. No, I'm not agreeing to that. Well, well, wait a minute. Uh, that and that and cricket didn't offer a contract. AT and T doesn't have a contract free plan, does it? Well, AT and T has this mobile share uh, plan, which uh, which we're on now, that which the cross family's on, and it's actually not a bad deal because you get unlimited text and you get unlimited phone calls and you get 10 gigs of data for a, a low price for about 140. I think it's 145 bucks a month. 145 bucks a month. How many how many phones? Uh, four phones. And you're sharing it. Yeah. No. Well, it, the and it's a contract. It's unlimited data. Uh, excuse me. Unlimited f messaging, texting, unlimited phone service. You can call unlimited, and you get 10 gigs of data to share between the uh, between the three or four phones. We originally had it for three phones. I added the fourth. Uh, and, you, and 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 quite frankly, giving. I mean, I I don't. I barely use like if I use uh, 50 megabytes a month, I, I'm I'm doing good. Because uh, I don't really use that much data, so so well, actually, I, I, use, yeah. I use a lot of data. And what I what I'm yeah. getting at here is like my little brother is on a cricket plan. Okay, he mm -hmm. he's on a cricket plan because he he can't afford the the hundred and twenty dollar a month unlimited plan for any of these for these carriers. Mm -hmm. AT and T sucks. 
I, 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 I'm sorry. There it goes was, another sponsor, folks. <laughs> you know, at and if you are sponsoring the Computer America show and you want me gone, please submit your, your request in writing. And, you know, please also submit it to you know you know to to anyone else. And please note if you are one of our rebroadcast syndication places, how does it go? The opinions expressed in the Computer America show are those of the co-hosts and guests, and not necessarily the networks. There you go. Exactly. AT&T sucks. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it, it, the coverage area was terrible when I was on it. They don't care about their customers. If they did care about their customers, they wouldn't have made a promise to say, oh, yeah, we'll hold it down for the next 18 months. You know, we'll put it at this for the next 18 months. And what that means and what AT&T is going to do to weasel their way out of this is they're going to say, well, look, the basic plan is still, um, you know, $40 a month. It's still forty dollars a month for this, this, or this. The plan itself, but we've got this fee now. We've got that fee now. Congratulations, your bill is seventy dollars, which is what we wanted you to pay in the first place. You know, so, but, but uh, how do you really feel about AT and T? <laughs> I, I mean, I've had I had them I had them once before. You know, I, I had AT and T once before, and yeah. and I had them for a brief second. Mm -hmm. You know. Went in. They, they, they. It was. It, it was just. It was just a nightmare experience. It was a horrible, horrible, horrible experience. And with AT and T sucking up what was going to be the last, the last, the like the last refuge of of unlimitedness of of freeness that didn't cost you anything. Now it's going. To, now the the war will begin once again between T Mobile and AT and T. T Mobile has already proven that they're going to do this differently. I mean, with AT&T, you're still required to be in a two-year commitment no matter what you do. And the reason they do that, the reason they do that is because they want to either hit you with the early termination fee or they want to guarantee they're going to have you for at least two years. Hmm. T-Mobile is like, you know, we're going to do this differently. We're going to provide you with outstanding everything. We're going to provide you with every reason to stay with us other than locking you into a contract. Do you use T-Mobile? I do. All right. Well, so we lose AT and T as a sponsor, but T Mobile, you're welcome. We're welcome to back. <laughs> we don't we don't have AT and T as a sponsor, but I said there goes a potential sponsor. Well, I mean, T Mobile <laughs> is now a better one. <laughs> better one, okay. I mean, everything everything that I've everything like everything we own is uh, data wise is on T Mobile, and it's because uh, now, mind you, everybody has their problems in their customer service department, you know. But that's just T Mobile's outsourcing. But the fact that there's no contract, there's nothing going on. I don't have to worry about roaming. I don't have to do anything special to get the stuff that I'm going to use regularly, and it doesn't cost me a whole lot. I, I don't know how many phones we've got on this account, and we we cost somewhere in the hundred and sixty dollars. You know, I, I mean, we've 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 got to have like six phones on this account, and you know. Every one of them, with the exception of mine, have unlimited data. And the reason mine doesn't have unlimited data is because I have a tethering plan. You know? Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, Fort in the chat room says he'd rather give money to AT&T than Charter. I wonder why. Because I use Charter, you know, in North Carolina. But you use Charter for your cable television. Uh, no, no, not, no, I don't. I don't have cable TV. I have direct TV. I, so use, Charter for, I use Charter for the Internet because they have a, uh. they have a blazing speed that they have. So does Charter still use Does Charter still use the uh these the blocking solenoids? The blocking solenoids. No idea what I'm talking about to you. No, no. Does that I mean? I mean, you're talking about the uh, um, where you um, where you they're they're limiting the data stream. You mean to yeah, there's yeah. a there's a line solenoid that goes on your line. Yeah. We don't yeah. Have them. Oh, okay. Because I remember many years ago they had them, and and if you oh. remove that solenoid, you get free basic cable. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't. Well, I don't know about that because I don't. Again, I don't have cable. Which I, I don't have TV. I only have internet. So. Ah. Okay. Well, let me finish up with the story and then we can move on. Because I thought we know, had. <laughs> well, I mean, it was just you know. So the so the end of the story, if you're listening, is AT and T sucks in Charles's opinion. <laughs> but it goes. AT and T also said it would honor all of Cricket's existing customer plans as long as Leap's CDMA network lives, even though they're planning on discontinuing the network and switching you to a GM, GSM network, which is what they've already. Said. And Cricket doesn't have contracts, so you can't get grandfathered into anything. Be prepared for your rate to go up. Uh, as I mentioned, that network is about to enter hospice care. AT&T also agreed to launch its LTE service in markets where Leap was was it was clearer was clear was clear spectrum, and it's agreed it's agreed to. Divest airways in 12 markets where it was over federally mandated spectrum limits. In all, all in all, though AT&T made relatively few concessions to get this deal closed, 
most of what it agreed to was likely already in its roadmap, and what wasn't was a small price to pay to get its hands on Leap's valuable airways. For instance, in Chicago, Leap owns a 10 megahertz chunk of the advanced wireless service band as well as 700 megahertz license. Once added to its Chicago network, AT&T will be able to use its, near, its new carrier aggregation technologies to amp up the network speed to a capacity of 150 megabits per second, rivaling Verizon's new upgraded network in the Windy City. And that is the end of that. AT&T sucks. See, it even says it down here. <laughs> uh, I saw the little fine print there. Well, no. you know, I, I, uh, everybody's entitled to their opinion. I, I do use AT and T, and I'm, and I'm pretty happy with it. So, uh, but mm. you know, oh, okay. Uh, okay. Why, why are you happy with it? Um, because I don't have any really, I don't have any troubles or problems with it that I can. I mean, it's pretty reliable. It's pretty much always there when I need it, so... But you don't travel often, do you? Mm, no. Don't you do travel that. between North Carolina and Florida, right? Pretty much, yeah. So, okay. But uh, even the trip between them, I go through uh, Georgia and South Carolina, and I mean, I don't have very many dropouts. I don't have any dropouts, really, that I can say. They're all at and uh, broadcast areas. Maybe it's because of the wonderfulness of my gold iPhone 5S. Could be. Could be. Could be. I will say, I mean, my 4S was terrible compared to uh, the 5S as far as uh, access. I know uh -huh. they had that antenna gate problem with the antenna with the, antenna with the antenna gate. Yeah. Oh, yeah, remember that? Uh -huh. uh, obviously, I've cleared up. By the way, I, again, I want to report that the it's, uh, my Touch ID is still working flawlessly. Ever since I went to the 7.1 upgrade, uh, it has worked. It's outstanding. And uh, actually, I do have to say uh, on on mine, mm -hmm. um, the the little tweaks that came came about, yeah, really nice. Are they nice? I mean, I mean, the little phone goes from a green and, to, and it rotates down for hang up. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. there's, there's some nice animations that they've added. Uh, the the way that you uh, uh you know when it, when the phone rings, it, it has a slightly different graphic, which kind of I kind of like. Uh, it's just they, they've added some little tweaks that are that are that are welcome. So uh, no, the only the only thing. That that the new upgrade has has made me long for, and I think it's more. I think it's more just the device itself. I yeah. wish I had gotten the black one instead of the silver one. <laughs> okay, well, really, you you rather have the black one? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know why, try. but all of a sudden I'm just like, oh, the black one looks really nice. Well, when the iPhone when the iPhone six isn't that far away, maybe you'll trade it in for the, the new iPhone six to get a black yeah, one. Yeah, but there's not going to be any bezel on it, so it's not going to matter what color it is. Well, the back of it will be uh, black. Well. Oh yeah, I guess so. Yeah, you see, and we don't know if it's going to be bezel-less. We're just kind of uh, get guessing, and, the, and there still will be a top and a bottom bezel. I just want left and right one. I want to go away. You know. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Target is back in the news again. Target. Target, better known as Target. Uh, according to The Verge, Target's security system reportedly caught the massive hack, but was ignored for weeks. Now, who told you that? A month ago. You did. Exactly. There you go. You were right. Should score another one for Charles. It was it was a breach. They knew about it, and they waited, and they waited, and they waited. Oh, they it's not really a breach. Maybe it would just go away. So that's what they thought. No, they, they, what happens is they, they, the, they, they sit on it. They sit on the find because an analyst somewhere said that this might be a, a, a breach. Then they said, well, let's investigate it, and let's investigate it, and let's investigate it, and so on and so forth. And then eventually it was confirmed as a breach, and then they were like, well, we have to tell people now. Who do we tell? And that, <laughs> that length, that length of time is what causes the problem. We tell everybody everyone. because when it breaks, you're yeah. going to lose everything. Well, in the wake of a December security breach that put up to 40 million credit card numbers and 70 million more pieces of customer contact information in the hands of hackers, Target has been doing damage control. It's installed new credit card security systems, and its chief operating officer resigned in early March. Okay, But according to a report from Bloomberg, uh, the company's state-of-the-art security system detected the hack as soon as it started. And did nothing. Instead, it took two weeks and a warning from federal investigators to plug the hole. The problem wasn't that Target 
had weak security in place. It had begun installing FireEye malware software six months before, and as soon as the hackers began uploading their code, alarms allegedly went off. Yep. On November the 30th, according to a person who has consulted on Target's investigation but is not authorized to speak on its on the record, Gee, the, hackers, the hackers deployed their custom-made code, triggering a FireEye alert that indicated unfamiliar malware, malware.binary, uh, Business Week writes. Details soon followed, including addresses for the servers where the hackers wanted their stolen data to be sent. As the hackers inserted more versions of the same malware, the security system sent out more alerts, each the most urgent on FireEye's graded scale. So it wasn't a catch, it was the most urgent on their yeah. scale. Target's Symantec antivirus system also apparently found suspicious activity around the same time. Business Week said that the FireEye software could have even automatically detected the malware automatically, but the function was turned off. Yep. Although that's reportedly not unusual for security teams that want to keep a human finger on the kill switch. Yep. In this case, though, it appears that nobody stepped in to take action. It's not clear why exactly Target wouldn't have responded. Uh, Business Week points to the possibility that security staff didn't yet trust the relatively new system or that a vacant position in the department made it easier to miss the alerts. According to separate reports, at least one security staffer raised concerns two months before the attack and was initially brushed off, although the exact concerns are unknown uh, and it's possible a review was performed before the attacks. But whatever happened... By the time Target started closing the holes in its security system, the hackers were far ahead. Okay. Now, so, here comes here comes in part a rant by an ethical hacker, mm -hmm. by a professional hacker, and a shameless plug for said hacker's company. <laughs> and, um, we've developed, we've started this campaign here, you know, in, in, here in Denver, and Azarian Cybersecurity, which is my company, um, we have started to trek out down this this path of. We are giving away penetration tests for free, mm. full scope, you know, you know, complete penetration tests for free. Mm. And here's the kicker: if you've had a penetration test in the last 90 days, mm. last 90 days, and you can prove it, mm. you hand us your you 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 don't even have to give us the report. You show us evidence that you had one in the last 90 days. We will do a full scope test on your infrastructure for free, 100 percent. Free. Wow. Catch. If we breach your system, you pay us. Ah. That's better than the one penny for ten records from Columbia Records. Well, you know, I, I mean, it, 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 that's the thing is pen tests are how people make money. They're not actually doing anything for security anymore. Hey, the, well, there's, we got a little bit more with the story, but we're going to break and we'll continue on. You listen to the Computer America Show on the Blog Talk Radio Network. On the Boost Radio Network and the IRN Radio Network, we will be right back. This is a special alert to all Americans who own a vehicle with less than 120,000 miles with an auto warranty about to expire or no warranty coverage at all. Due to a decline in the economy and major car companies filing for bankruptcy, Cover America Auto Care has announced revolutionary, inexpensive mechanical breakdown coverage that is now available to the general public to save consumers thousands on auto repairs. An open phone line has been established for drivers to call who own a vehicle that is less than 10 years old for a free 5-minute quote and to see if you qualify. The number is 800-483-2514. Drivers who are covered with this auto protection will not have to pay for a covered repair again. This is the auto coverage now sweeping across America at a fraction of what dealerships charge and is now available to the public by calling today. The number to call is 800-483-2514. 800-483-2514. That's 800-483-2514. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-866-663-MYTV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. 
So, disable the cable and get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-866-663-MYTV right now to sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and up to four rooms. And there's no equipment to buy. That includes your free HDTV upgrade, your free DVR upgrade, and your free professional installation. And the best part, the pristine digital picture and sound. Call 1-866-663-MYTV. So, what are you waiting for? Pull out your major credit or debit card. Call 1-866-663-MYTV. 1-866-663-MYTV. Disable the cable, cut costs, and get more. Call 1-866-663-MYTV. 1-866-663-MYTV. Hello, this is your London Minute. Voice memo. When technology is woven, quite literally, with fashion, you've got my attention. Last week, I touched and examined an interactive, smartphone-controlled LED miniskirt, costing £3,750. Ladies, I won't convert the price into dollars. It will make it seem even more out of our reach. The skirt, along with a twinkling jacket made by Cute Circuit, was featured on the live broadcast of the BBC World Service Technology Radio Show, Click. The topic? Wearable technology. I was front row centre, so I got a good look at the wearables. CuteCircuit.com is the stuff attention-seeking sparkly dreams are made of. An iPhone app controls the skirt patterns and colours. And I know the practical people are wondering something. Yes, you can wash the skirt gently, 30 degrees C, and it's USB chargeable. One simply must be practical. I'll see you over on Twitter. I'm at Computer Tweety. This is Patricia Reichel for Computer America. Thanks for that, Patricia. We always love the voice memo here on the Computer America Show. Uh, Craig and I are doing computer and technology news brought to you by Slimware Utilities. Uh, head over to slimwareutilities.com where you can clean, speed up, and optimize your computer for free. Free! <laughs> if you guys want to get in on the Computer America Show, give us a call, 347-884-8881. That number again is 347-884-8881. We'll get you on and get you through. You can join us over on ComputerAmerica.com in our live interactive add-on chat chat room. You can also see me in my, uh, my forced uh, blue hoodie here. Um, you can see Craig in his extreme stillness. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's interesting, <laughs> kind of, sometimes. Uh, shoot us an email to com live at computeramerica.com, or you can Skype us at Computer America, and that's all one word. Too long. Too long? Yeah. Okay, it's Computer America, not too long, one word. <laughs> no? Am I right? So we're doing this story about the Target. <laughs> A massive hack ignored for a week, and, and then finishing it up, we say, like, who was behind the tack? The attack. Since the attack, ex security experts has been, have been tracing the malware in question <coughs> and tracking the stolen credit card numbers. In December, uh, he identified a hacker known as Helkern, Helkern. or Andre Kordyrevsky, allegedly the administrator of the site where the credit cards ended up for sale. Means nothing. <coughs> Business Week wasn't able to def uh, definitively identify. Kordorevsky as the hacker, but it pull, puts together a strong case. Oh, well, there you go. No, it, there's okay. First of all, you can't blame him for having the site that's administered. Currently, currently, there's a guy selling. You remember Mount Gox's hack? Yeah. It's there's okay. a guy trying to get six hundred thousand dollars or one hundred Bitcoin for the data that he stole allegedly from Mount Gox. Mm -hmm. He's hosting it on various different places. He's hosting that. He's hosting his his advert on Pastebin. Does that mean that the the, the creators and the the admins of Pastebin should be held accountable? No. This one user did something, and they're they're trying to say we've got to find somebody who did it, and they're chasing really really hard. They're not going to catch this hacker, and when they do catch this hacker, even if even no matter how much they say they've caught this person, I'm going to be completely skeptical. I'm going to be one of those people that are like, yeah, no, that's just the scapegoat. Because they've tried to blame this hack on so many different people at this point that they really don't know what happened. You know, they've now the the intrusion signatures, the intrusion signatures, yes, they saw that. That was in their systems long beforehand. You know, the analyst who was in charge of it, the credit card processing company, I know for a fact 
the credit card processing company that hosted the backbone of Target's network knew it. They saw it. They communicated. They said, look, this might be a problem. This is a potential indicator of compromise, but then did absolutely nothing else. And the reason they did nothing else, because it wasn't in their scope of work. Mm. Tired of it. Yep. Be secure. Yes. <laughs> I had a window open that had all my my new stuff on it, but I have to find the window. A little again. badge says that be secure. Be secure. Yeah. Be secure. A little, little B, you know, it'll be yeah. little, be yeah. secure. Be secure. Okay. Be secure. All right. Uh, it's your turn to do a story, isn't it? Um, let's do this one. It's kind of interesting. Um, Colin Powell's sixty-year-old selfie is everything you could ever hope for in a selfie. What is a selfie? Explain to our listeners what a selfie is. It's a self. It's a it's a photograph of yourself, okay. in either a mirror or anything else. Okay. You, know, you take. Yeah, I know you've got it, Craig. So that's how you took the picture you've got right now. That's technically a selfie, isn't it? You took that picture. <laughs> no, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what? There's something going on in my building, and I keep. That's what I went away for for a second because it sounded like somebody had kicked at a door somewhere. Really. Yeah, and I don't, I don't, I don't know what's going on. So I'm gonna, gonna, gonna. When you're on your story, I'll go check out and grab my my boomstick and see if somebody needs to be, you know, aerated. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Colin Powell's 60 year old selfie is everything you could ever hope for in a selfie. Let's see down here. Oh, it's two pictures. Okay. So I, I don't really think we can do this article because it talks specifically about the articles. If you want to see it, um, I'll post the, the link up in the chat room, and mm -hmm. I will do another story from this one. Well, why don't I do the story, and you want to check out the boom, and I'll go ahead and do this? Okay. Microsoft, right this is from The Verge, Microsoft launches low-cost Office 365 personal subscription service. That's right. We've been talking about it. Patricia Reichel has been talking about it, and it's here. Microsoft officially launched its subscription version of Office back in September 2012, but the company is announcing a new, cheaper option for individuals today. Office 365 Personal is a $6.99 per month, or $69.99 a year, subscription service that provides access to the Office 2013 applications for Windows, and the ability to install and use the Mac and mobile versions of the application. Now, while the $9.99 per month Office 365 Home Premium allows you to use the service across of up to five PCs or Macs, Office 365 Personal is valid for just one computer and one tablet. Office 365 has been slowly growing in sh its share of subscriptions, and Microsoft revealed back in October that more than 2 million people now subscribe to the service. In the five months since, it's added an additional 1.5 million subscribers, bringing the total number of Office 365 subscribers to 3.5 million. 75% growth over such a short period of time is impressive, and Microsoft will be hoping that the addition of a lower price bracket will increase growth further. Microsoft final announcement of the day relates to Home Premium. To coincide with the launch of Office 365 Personal this spring, Microsoft is renaming Office 365 Home Premium to just Office 365 Home. So there you go. Uh, a lot less expensive uh, premium service for personal. And again, Office 365 Home, it's here. It's now. Uh, again, I think six ninety nine per month is certainly uh, worth it, given the fact that all those applications cost hundreds of dollars. And uh, yeah, I mean, you you, uh, you get the entire office um, suite of applications, um, and uh, and again, you can use it on Windows, Mac, uh, pre and mobile versions of the applications. Uh, again, Office three sixty five. Home available today. Okay, uh, let's continue on uh, with this. Um, now, I guess uh, to say that the um, the Los Angeles Los Angeles Times business section is announcing the end of an era. The end of an era. 
Google is no longer underlining hyperlinks in its search. That's right. Today, Google has introduced a change to its search engine that removes one of the design elements it still carried from the 90s, underlined hyperlinks. To give a Google search a cleaner look, Google has increased the font size of result titles, even outline heights, and most importantly, removed the underlines. Wow. Uh, this, Im this improves readability and creates an overall cleaner look, said the lead designer for Google Search in a Google post. Uh, the new look was introduced as a way to make the web version of Google Search resemble the underlying free look introduced last year in the mobile versions of the Surface. Okay. Did you notice that the underlines were gone in your mobile version of Google? I didn't. Hmm. Uh, user opinion on the design change is split. Some like no underlines, saying it gives a cleaner look to the search results, while others already miss the retro look. And they give uh, some examples of people who, uh, you know, were complaining about the uh, underlines. Uh, here's one. Says, I no, I will miss the blue underlines and links. <laughs> okay, that's one comment. Um, Here's one from Michael Anderson. Says, Not a fan of the new underline less Google results. I find it hard to scan the page. Maybe that's the plan. Uh, click ads on top. Okay, he's asking. Here's another one from uh, Jason Tan. Says, On the 25th anniversary of the World Wide Web, I lament that a text underline is now none, is the new norm. I'm looking at you, Google. Okay. Another one. I hate the new Google search results style. Give me my underline back. Okay, another one. So, Google finally removed the underline from URLs in search results. Took them a while, so he's obviously for it. Uh, this one, Adrian Robinson said, uh, Google has removed the underline from its search results. Now that looks much better. Okay, so he likes it. He's in favor for it. You know, um, <clears throat> uh, here's another one. Yay, Google search results links dropped the underline. Uh, Google has removed underline from search result title that has apparently morphed the font in a little on some line height. Looks neat. So there's a, so it looks like it's split. 50-50. Uh, 50-50 uh, decision. Charles, uh, let me ask you this. So what do you think? Do you, do you, I don't, did you, did you even notice that Google is no longer underlining its hyperlinks in search? No. Yep. Uh, I, don't think anybody, I don't think anybody actually noticed that. I mean. Well, I, I did. I noticed it. Uh, when just now? Yeah, just now. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but you, under, that's how you know something's a hyperlink. You know, you know that it, you can click on it if it's underlined. If you take that away, how do you know it's clickable? Well, it's assumed that it's clickable. I mean, like I'm looking at like like you're talking you're talking about. Well, I, I don't actually know what you're talking where they're talking about where they removed it. Like like in the search results. Yeah, the search results. Yeah, Google's no longer underlining hyperlinks in the search results. But they still underline it if you mouse over it. You do? They do? Yeah. Do a Google search for anything. They still mouse over it and you still okay. get it. Let me let me let me search for something here. Let me type in uh Charles Tendo. Uh, <laughs> uh Craig Crossman. <laughs> <laughs> no results found. Really? Oh. You you're right. When you when you scroll over it, right, the links become apparent. You don't see it in there, but if you you uh you scroll when you pass oh, your mouse, you hop your mouse over, you see them. Yeah, I see it. Okay. It still has some of my old searches stored. Craig Crossman, singer, Fountain Blue. Okay, so there you go. <laughs> he moves on. He's like, really? No, go okay. So focus. Are, so you so you like the 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 cleaner look? I mean, cleaner is always better. It's usually you know it, I like it. I mean, I don't I don't really think we need to be told what a hyperlink is anymore. I think it's naturally we've gotten to the point where we just all assume it. Okay. All right. Uh, Okay, since I did two stories, why don't you do a story? Okay, let's see. Which one do I want to do? Bitcoin, Bitcoin is in the news. I know you're big on Bitcoin. Let me. Which one? There. Wait, 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 wait. Giga ohm. Giga ohm. Giga ohm. Last Giga -ohm. story. It's not the. Is it the last story that I sent you? Yeah, the last was uh, the, uh, the ones. There we go. Bitcoin Vault. There we are. Uh huh. See, I don't. I used to. I used to open them all up. 
Yeah. But we both started having the same problem at the same time where it oh. would just creep to a halt. So like right now, like it's taken ridiculously long for this to open and it yep. makes no sense. You know, ultra fast internet, gigabit, gigabit connection, you know, it's it's ju and it's just on the Mac. If no, I had no, clicked that no, link no, on my I'm Linux block, really it hasn't done that now for a while, so I'm not sure what that is. It's it's mine stopped. Do well, we? I, I, it's because I have more than two tabs open. Yeah, I have a multiple. T I I went back to the multiple tabs, and so far it hasn't been any problem. Really? What did you change? Um, there was one of the settings in the preferences that I did change, and I'll tell you what that is. You go to Firefox and then go preferences. It's uh um under tabs. Um, don't load tabs until selected. I de I uncheck that. So huh. it loads. It only loads the tabs. Uh, it says don't load tabs until selected. I took that off. Okay, I, I've deselected it. We'll see. We'll see how it okay. how it turns out. Uh, All right, this one. Bitcoin Va Vault Zappo offers solution to the theft and a tiny nest egg upon sign up. Okay, this again, gigaohm.com. One of the reasons Bitcoins get Bitcoin gets such attention is because people keep stealing them. Everywhere this er, every week it seems that another secure air quote. Wallet service gets gets plundered by tech savvy thieves. That's one of the one of the appeals of Zappo, a startup that just received a twenty million dollar investment to build out its secure, insured, insured really yeah. vault for Bitcoin. I signed up for Zappo on Thursday to check it out and to see about its free Bitcoin offer for new customers. Mm -hmm. Alas, it turns out the giveaway only amounts to 0, 0. 0.00005 of a Bitcoin, or if you prefer, 5,000 Satoish, the currency's small unit, smallest unit, okay. What, um, is, what is a Sato? Satoish. 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 That, Satoish. That's Bitcoin's smallest unit. It's the smallest unit. It's the smallest okay. unit of Bitcoin, which adds up to about three cents as of Thursday. But even though the free Satoshi aren't uh, worth your time, the company's vault claims uh, claims are still pretty cool. It works like this. When you transfer your Bitcoins from, Zap, from a Zappo wallet to the vault, the company encrypts the data and copies it, copies it onto external drives and paper. It then scatters these data scraps to various locations, including a mountain, or so Zappo says. Eh, Iron Mountain, you're everywhere. Yeah. You know? And if Zappo's mountain is somehow overrun by bad guys, customers are still uh, backstopped by Meridian Insurance. Oh. Interesting. Uh, the cost of all of its security is a 0.12% annual fee for each deposit, which doesn't seem all that outlandish given the ongoing spat, the spate of robberies and the outrage at Mt. Gox, whose shady CEO claims someone mysteriously made off with 700,000 bitcoins. Hmm. Uh, Zappo also deserves to be considered a serious Bitcoin player because its CEO is Wes Carnes, not Wes Craven, Wes Craven, yeah. Wes Carnes, yeah, not Wes Craven, a respected Silicon Valley executive who sold his previous company, Lemon Wallet, for $43 million to LifeLock. As Caress explained at a at GigaOM's Bitcoin meetup last year, his experience his his experience growing up in Argentina made him wary of unstable currencies. Oh. The new vault and wallet venture also deserves attention because of its twenty million dollar investment, which was led by benchmark led by benchmark, which with Fortress Investment Group and Rabbit Capital also participating. The big funding round means Zappo is poised to be a rival to Coinbase, which offers a consumer-friendly wallet and exchange service, and is another grown-up player in the bur burgeoning, burgeoning, that's the right word, <laughs> Bitcoin space. Yes. Yeah. Okay, well, any comments on that? I'm still a huge fan of Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin is amazing. I think we need to continue to use Bitcoin. I think it needs to continue to develop as a currency and and get more secure. And we get more. And now that we've got a big player who's doing insurance stuff, my 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 one Bitcoin that dipped below being worth a thousand dollars is going to go back up to somewhere close to it. All right. Did you know that about the Satoshis? That's the the smallest unit. I had no idea about that. No. No, I hadn't heard of it. Either. Yeah. No. Okay, uh, 
according to TechCrunch here, um, this story is uh, says that the CEO Sean Rad says dating app Tinder has made one billion matches. Have you ever used Tinder? No, I have not. Are you sure? Yes, I'm married. Because I, I think I think I saw you connected on Tinder at one point. No, never. <laughs> Tinder is announcing that it has made one billion matches between its users. Are there that many people dating on the dating scene? A billion people? That's that's. Uh, scary. I mean, over the course of a certain amount of time, and they aren't now. Read the article. Tinder like, is not meant to make matches, as in lifelong matches. It's meant to make hookups, and that's what. It's probably more accurate that you know a million hookups have happened. Okay. Well, as most all of you know, according to this article, Tinder works by giving users a stack of potential matches. And allowing them to swipe right or left to show their interest. If two users express mutual interest, then the app will connect them, allowing them to send each other messages. Those are the matches that Tinder is counting. Okay. The company isn't disclosing how many registered or active users it has, so it's hard to make an apples to apples connection to other apps. What this illustrates, according to the co founder and CEO Sean Rad, is Tinder is here to stay. Tinder is absolutely solving a core human issue that people have with social discovery. Okay. So if you want to make some sense of how quickly Tinder has grown, well, when they first covered this, uh, the ISC back startup in January of last year, it said it had made 1 million matches and the number was 500 million in December. Okay. Uh, Rad added that the number of connections made per user is on the rise. Uh, something he attributes to the team's constantly improving our recommendation engine. We're increasingly better at suggesting people that we think you'd be interested in knowing. Okay. He also confirmed yesterday's report that Tinder would be adding verification to celebrity profiles, although he said we haven't fully rolled it out yet. He explained the feature by saying the team is committed to the authenticity of our ecosystem. Tinder told uh, the TechCrunch that Rad was scheduled to make the announcement a few minutes ago in an interview on CNBC, although I don't have a TV on in front of me, according to the author of the story. Uh, Rad also appeared at at uh, their Crunchies Awards ceremony, the TechCrunch has a Crunchies Awards ceremony, last month, where he noted that the app is becoming more age-diverse, with 18 to 24-year-olds making up 50% of the total user base. And he hinted at plans to move beyond dating by connecting people non-romantically as well. And we know what that means and what that is. Okay. Okay. Well, hey, you know, if there's, if there's a market for it, you know. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I, I know people who have used Tinder. I know people who, who, who brought it up, who, who when I was back, back when I was on Facebook, they were like, oh, Tinder, yeah. And, you know, I remember I looked at it for all of 30 seconds. And I was like, you know, one. It was another one of those apps that got into your profile and just did all sorts of crazy things. And I was like, you know what? And it was, it was, you know, it was, it, it was part of the reason, you know, not in the end, but it was part of the reason why I ditched Facebook. There was just too many. It 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 took the 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 personal interaction out of personal interaction. You know, now it's now it's you know basically hot or not, where it's like, oh, you're attractive. Here, let me let me do this. You know, and then you start talking. It's a meaningless conversation. If you're single, you know, go go get your freak on. You know, it's over. Maybe it leads to something. Be safe about it. You know, don't. You know, there's there's a whole nother article that that just popped up on me that that you know brings brings a whole nother thing to it. You know, that we should probably you know, that that everybody should be worried about. You yeah. know, the the uh, um, revenge porn thing that's going around right now. A lot of that happens on apps like Tinder, and that's the the seedy underbelly that they won't actually tell you about. Yeah, yeah, and neither will we. Yeah, <laughs> except Craig's experience with it. He ended up wearing a USB powered skirt. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the one that Patricia Reichel talked about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, okay, so I guess it's my turn. Well, we have time. Maybe one one more story. Okay. I don't. I don't think we do. I think. Why don't we just? Uh, why don't we just? Uh, Talk about what uh, what we had here. You know, I thought that the uh, the discussion we had tonight with uh, uh, audiobooks uh, really uh, uh, was an interesting one. Uh, again, that we we posed the question to them that if you read a book and uh, or if you listen to an audiobook, 
are they equal? Are they saying, can, can you uh, can you be considered that you've read the book if you've listened to it rather than read it physically? Right, if, exactly. And I think that uh, I think that uh, it's an interesting question, partly because I posed it. <laughs> and, no, no, no. And uh, and um, um, I think it would be a great idea. I think they should have an experiment where they have ten students and uh, one uh, university professor assigning them to uh, do a book report. Uh, five of them will read the book, and the other five will l listen to an audio book. Uh, the, the audiobook version of that book, mm -hmm. and then they will all write book reports. The professor won't know which student did what, you know. Uh, he'll grade them a report, and then after he's graded them, then it will be revealed which which student read the book, which student uh, listened to the book, and see what kind of reports. Now, of course, it can't be completely equal because obviously some students will be better in doing a book report. You know, you have to factor that in. You know, some might well, yeah, they might factor that in, but even yeah. still, you know, let's see, let's see what happens. I mean, if it, if it shows that that the kids who listened to the book were more well, engaged in the book, that'd be interesting. Have all the all the students that listened to the book got A's, and 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 some of the other ones maybe one A and a, you know some B's and a C or something? That would certainly make a big statement. Yeah. Uh, I would say get uh, the, even the playing field. I would say try to get students of of the same academic uh, grading system, point system. You know, try to get them the as equal as possible. You know, academically, uh, uh, academic achievement. Try to get some uh, all ten students that are uh, you know relatively equal as far as their academic scores are. Uh -huh. uh, so try to so you can't say well this this person this student was you know a really bad student and that wasn't fair. So try to get them uh, the equal. Of equal uh, um, uh, grades, you know, and then and then see what the results. Are. I think that would be a, a terrific experiment. Yeah, I mean that's kind of why I brought it up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to follow up with them and see if they actually do something like that. I think we should we should sponsor it. Uh, maybe I don't know. We should. Hey, tomorrow night, if you're into Bond, James uh, Bond. No, Ralph Bond is going to be. Uh, Ralph Bond is going to be joining us seconds. for both hours. He's got some great stories. Uh, we got some. He's got some cheat notes here. Uh, we're going to post them up for you to look at. Uh, but Ralph Bond is going to be joining us for both hours on our Friday night show. And of course, it being Friday night, I guess we'll talk just talk about uh, all those great things and and. Oh, Friday. We, we can kind of diverse on Friday. You know, we kind of spread out spread out a little bit and talk have, about. Have we ever have we ever done like? What Ralph sends us show? Like, have we ever done that one? No. Sixty well, seconds. Well, it's Friday. We always end up doing something, all kinds of things. What is that, what is that you're playing with? Looks like your keys or something. Oh no, it's a, 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 a tripod. Oh, a tripod. Okay. <laughs> well, we're out out of time. Uh, it's been a lot of fun tonight. Hopefully, you had a lot of fun as well. And again, Ralph Bond will be joining us for Friday night. We made it again. So. Yay. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, as Charles drinks a bottle of water, we're gonna take a. We'll uh, take the rest of the night off. <laughs> and we'll see you tomorrow night. Stay tuned for our five minutes after the show on our video. So until tomorrow night, this is Craig Crossman, hoping that your hard disk never becomes floppy. sloppy. Not floppy, sloppy. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow night. Ten seconds. <laughs> Thank you for using Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye. All right, there you go. We're out. We still have people listening there on the on the live hangout. It's like that. We still have them listening on the live hangout. Oh. We'll say night all in the chat room. So it it it, it freaked me out because uh, we have a new tenant in the building. A, a new office space has been leased upstairs. It's actually a friend of mine from. Um, um, from the old building we were in, and um, I didn't realize he and his niece were in the building. And he, like at this time of night here, you don't ever expect that. Like, like I, I've gotten so accustomed to there being no one around, you know, to hear activity. You're like, what's going on? Mm -hmm. You know, time to aerate some people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, it was him and his niece. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I think we're. Cool. Oh, I didn't do my upgrade alert. I'll do that tomorrow. Yeah, I'll do it. No. 
No, I like mine better. <laughs> Red alert! All hands to battle stations. This is not a drill. Wait. Yes, it is not a drill. It is not a drill. It is a screwdriver. It's a screwdriver. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you gonna send me the code? Oh uh, yep. Give me a minute here. Let me in the hangout. Uh, well, we're only a minute into it. Anyway, love everybody. Good night. Good night, everybody. Yes. Yeah.